YW presents the Philadelphia Phillies pregame show. Brought to you by Safeguard Mutual Insurance and by Woco Department Store. A serious automobile accident. It could happen to you. Do you have the proper insurance coverage at affordable rates? Check your policy. Then call Safeguard Mutual, celebrating its 40th anniversary. Safeguard Mutual are insurance professionals specializing in no-fault auto insurance. They provide you with 24-hour service and issue ID cards on the spot. So call them at 563-0935 and compare their premium with what you now pay. Call today, Safeguard Mutual, 563-0935. Also check their rates for fire and homeowners insurance. Three convenient locations, 6752 Market Street, Upper Darby, 1321 Arch Street, and 4419 North Broad Street in Philadelphia. See their ad in the yellow pages. And remember, for proper insurance coverage at affordable rates, call Safeguard Mutual, 563-0935, 563-0935. Hi, everybody from Atlanta Stadium and Atlanta GA. Harry Callis with you, where the Phillies continue their series with the Atlanta Braves. And our special guest tonight is Phillies pitcher Jim Wright, who presently is on the disabled list. And, Jim, last year at this time, you were pitching up a storm, having a great year at Oklahoma City. You were selected or awarded the Allie Reynolds Award, emblematic of the best pitcher in the American Association. And then all of a sudden, things began to happen to your arm. When did it happen? And uh, fill us in from the end of last year at Oklahoma City and to the present. Well, Harry, I, like you said, I was going, our team was going well, and everything was going just like I wanted it to go as far as my career in baseball and, and going to the Phillies. But uh, it's, my arm started bothering me a little bit in uh, July, about the 1st of July, and I kept pitching until I really couldn't pitch anymore, and that was about August 3rd, my last start. And I rested it all winter, and, uh, and hopefully I was over it, and I went to spring training because I thought I was going to make a club, and I'd be pitching and be here now, but I'd be playing and not on the, on the disabled list. And uh, I had a recurrence of it about halfway through spring training, and, and I got a second diagnosis, and uh, I went from there and been in a cast for a month. And I had was diagnosed with a stress fracture, so I'm uh, throwing again and with new anticipation, hoping that I'm going to get back up here on the club and pitch where I belong. And that's where I'm at really at the present, right? Was there any surgery involved at all? No, there wasn't. There was a, you know, there was a thought of it, but with what I have, like a stress fracture type of injury, there's no surgery really needed, just a little mother nature. It just takes time for it to heal and it'll heal naturally and everything will be fine. A stress fracture of uh, what is that the elbow yeah well no it's of the ulna bone which is the bone that runs from the elbow to the hand and it's about midway down on, on my forearm so this spring when you were working out with the phillies and uh, really had every opportunity to make the ball club uh, could you feel like you just weren't throwing right did you feel it right away or only midway through the spring well no harry like the first my first start against the cardinals i, I threw well and without without any sort of pain or discomfort and i was really thought i was over it and through my trauma and then the next time out, it, it, it started hurting me, and then it just kind of blew out all at once. Where then I knew that I wasn't going to make the club then because I knew it was back, and, and I'd be setting out for a while and, and for it to heal again. So it wasn't really any part as, as far as uh, my performance. It was just that, like you say, it was uh, something I, I'm hurting. And when you're not 100%, you can't expect to do the job. So you, currently you're on the road trip with the ball club, and what are you doing? I, I know you're running, but are you also throwing? Yes, and I'm throwing now. I've been throwing off the mound. I've been for to I've been throwing for about a total of two weeks now, counting the time at home and the road trip. And it, it's starting to feel strong again. I'm, I'm ready to start throwing BP and, and testing it out and see what I've got. What's the prognosis? Is it just a matter of uh, whenever you feel strong and feel like it's all right? Right, that's, that's about it. Uh, if I don't feel any reoccurrence like I had in the spring, then... Uh, I'm going to start throwing breaking balls and, and get, in, get into pitching condition and trying it all over again. Jim, uh, speaking of breaking balls, what do you have in your repertoire of pitches? Uh, I stick mainly with the fastball, but I throw a slider maybe 20% of the time, and I have a, a slow curve that I, I flop up, a, up, up there every once in a while just to keep the hitter on edge, but mainly a slider and a fastball. The curve ball then would be your changeup? Right, that would be my changeup. I do throw a straight change, but I, I use both of them sparingly, you know. So while you're up here, and of course you're working out before the games, uh, what do you do during the games? Do you sit? Uh, do you sit in the bullpen? Do you sit in the dugout? Do you talk to pitchers about what's going on with hitters and that sort of thing? Well, right. I kind of mix it around, Harry. Most of the time, I stay in the dugout, and I do talk to the pitchers because it's, it's helpful, you know, to talk to some of the veterans up here. That they know they've been in the game, and they 
and I'm a youngster starting out or a rookie, you might say, and there's a lot I need to learn, and I, I really like to sit and talk to the pitchers because they really help me out. Tim, what will happen when you say, okay, I'm ready, and uh, the club feels and the team physician, Dr. Marone, feels like, yes, he's okay and ready to go. Uh, will you go down to Oklahoma City then, or what will happen? Well, hey, that's a good question. It's a question I don't know. I would have to assume that they would probably send me to Oklahoma City to get a start down there or to get my confidence up because I haven't pitched in the major leagues, as you know, except for spring training. Uh, but I would rather stay up here because I, I think I can handle the pressure, and I know it's a little pressure now, the way things are going, but uh, I'd, love to, I'd love to stick around and try it out, but more than, more than that, I'll probably be back in Oklahoma City. Has pitching always been your profession, even as a youngster? Uh, yes, sir. It really was. I started pitching when I was about 11, and I've pitched ever since, and that's, that's about the only way I'd like it anyway. What kind of hitter are you? Well, I'm a fair hitter. I hit, I hit pretty good in high school. I always uh, used to hit the long ball. I, I like to think of myself as a pretty good hitter. It, it, in the minor leagues, we've had the DH for the last three or four years, so it's been a while since I've swung the bat. So I'm anxious to get up there and do that, too, because that's part of the game, and it's all fun. Well, Jim, we hope you get back very soon and uh, very best to you and take good care of that arm. We hope to see you on the mound for the Phillies real soon. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Jim Wright, our guest, and all of our guests on the pregame show receive a beautiful Seiko watch, courtesy of the Seiko Collection and Gimbals. And we'll be back with a final word right after this. Back at Atlanta Stadium, stay tuned for the ball game now. The Phillies and the Atlanta Braves. The Phillies coming into play in a tie for second place in National League East, two and a half games behind the Chicago Cubs. Cubs will be playing at St. Louis tonight and tied with the Phillies, the Montreal Expos. The Expos will be at Pittsburgh. Tonight on the mound for the Phillies will be Jim Lomborg. He'll be opposed by an ex-Phil Dick Ruthen. All the action will be coming your way in just a couple of minutes. Quick check on sports now from the KYW Newsroom. In the NCAA Northeast Regional Baseball Championship, St. John's beat Temple 8-5. to five. They will meet again tomorrow night at 6.30. It is a double elimination tournament, so one of the teams is going to go, one of them is going to stay alive. Johns Hopkins won the NC2A Division I Lacrosse Championship today by beating Cornell 13-8 in Piscataway, New Jersey. Bob DeSimone scored three goals to lead in Johns Hopkins' attack. It was Cornell's first defeat in three years. Bob Murphy is a one-shot lead after three rounds of the Atlanta Golf Classic. He shot up five under par 67 a day, giving him a 54-hole total of 201, 15 under par. In slow pitch softball this afternoon. Doubleheader at the vet. The Detroit Caesars beat the Philadelphia Athletics 19-18 in the first game that went 10 innings. The Athletics came back and took the nightcap 12-10. 1,478 showed up. Carlos Palomino has retained his World Boxing Council Welterweight Championship with a 15-round unanimous decision over Mondo Muniz in Los Angeles. This is KYW 1060, Philadelphia News Radio in the Delaware Valley. It's 7.30. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Atlanta Stadium, where the Phillies play the Atlanta Braves tonight. I'm Andy Musser with Chris Wheeler. Harry Callis and Rich Ashburn will join us later in the broadcast. And the Phillies have dropped four straight ball games, and tonight they're going against a former teammate, Dick Ruthven. Traded over here to Atlanta from Chicago after the Phillies gave him up in the Jim Cott deal. And, uh... Ruthven has never been able to beat his former teammates. Last year, because of injuries, he did not even pitch against the Phillies. Well, we have a good night for baseball. The lineups have been handed out at home plate. We'll be back to give them to you following these messages. He wants these dealers to sell every Mercury in stock. Every one. That includes the anniversary edition four-door Mercury marquee with its traditional full-size luxury and comfort, plus... A special value package featuring a vinyl roof, luxury wheel covers, body side moldings, flight bench seat, and more. Right now, this special package is being offered by Lincoln Mercury to its dealers at a factory discount. So check out your local Lincoln Mercury dealer now. At the sign of the cat. Acme Super Saver has everything you need for your outing. So when you shop, don't forget our sandwich meats, the eggs and garden greens. Also luscious fruit rushed from the orchard seed. Don't forget Acme's cups and plates, chips and soda pop. The franks and rolls and ideal things for on top. Also for your burgers, juicy and brown, get Lancaster brand beef. You'll find it freshly ground. For everything you need at prices you're going to like, don't forget Acme Super Saver. Right now, MAB is offering you a chance to buy the Phillies Way Souvenir Book for just $1.49. This colorful book features playing tips from your favorite Phillies, plus a complete set of Phillies baseball cards. Think of it, the entire Phillies team all under one cover. Just try to match that with regular baseball cards. And when you visit your MAB paint store, dealer, or Rich Lux Home Center, 
you will get more years per gallon of the MAB Seashore House paint. You can't buy better paint. The Phillies and MAB, great in 78. The Carrollton High School band from the area with our national anthem. And now it's lineup time, so let's swing over to Chris Wheeler. Okay, Henny, thank you very much. The Philadelphia Phillies will go with Bake McBride leading off and playing right field. Larry Bowitz, shortstop, batting second. Mike Schmidt at third base. He'll head number three. Greg Luzinski in left field, batting fourth. Richie Hebner at first base. He'll head number five. Gary Maddox in center field, batting sixth. Bob Boone, the catcher, will hit seventh. Davey Johnson at second base again tonight. He'll head number eight. And the pitcher for the Phillies will be right-hander Jim Lonborg. For the Atlanta Braves, they'll go with Jerry Royster at second base. Brian Asselstein will be in center field and hit number two. Gary Matthews in right field batting third. Jeff Burrows, the left fielder, hitting fourth. Fifth, Pocaroba will catch and hit number five. Dale Murphy at first base batting sixth. Barry Bonnell at third base, he'll hit number seven. Darrell Cheney, the shortstop, will hit number eight. And the pitcher will be former Philly right-hander Dick Ruthven. All right, Chris, and a reminder, this broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Philadelphia Phillies solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the description and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Phillies is prohibited. The announcers on this broadcast are retained by WPHL-TV, subject to the approval of the Phillies who send us Chris Wheeler. The umpires tonight, Doug Harvey has the plate, Andy Olson at first, Jim Quick at second, Jerry Crawford at third. During tonight's Phillies game, each Philly that homers receives a free case of Tasty Cake and one for St. Edmund's Home for Crippled Children. The same goes for the Phillies winning pitcher. And now you can win even more money in the Daily News home run payoff because this season every hit pays off. Tonight's payoff inning will be the fifth. Well, the Phillies are looking to score some runs tonight. Last night, the knuckleballer Phil Necro completely baffled them, all except for Jerry Martin's pinch hit home run. And the Phillies lost that ball game their fourth in a row. And they are all even at 500 now, 19 and 19, as this road trip is two games away from its conclusion. Here's Ruthman into his windup. The ex Phil right-hander ready to make his first pitch, and it's a fastball in for a strike at the knees to Bake McBride, who is batting at 288. Billy DeMar is in the coaching box at third, and Tony Taylor down at first base. Very pretty night for baseball here in Atlanta. Ruthman has the sign from Pocaroba, and here is a line drive in the right field, a base hit. Bake McBride singles on a one-hopper to Gary Matthews in right, and the Phillies have their first runner on. Well, Bake McBride has now batted safely in nine of the last ten ball games with that hit. It brings to the plate Larry Boa batting at 301. Larry, the last of the Philly 300 hitters with the exception of two of the reserves. Larry's been playing good baseball on this trip in the last 70 games, or last seven games, I should say. He's betting at a 375 clip. Boa switch hitter up there as a left-handed batter against Dick Ruthman. Here's a throw to first base. Fake McBride is back in time. Ruthman from Sacramento, California, as is Boa. Dick has a good move. Here's another quick throw to first base, and Fake just gets back. He has a quick turn, and he fires hard to the bag. Rookie Dale Murphy holding the bag at first. Stretching the pitch on the way to Boa, it's low. That was one of the things that was really amazing about Ruthman when uh, the Phillies got him. He came right out of college, and a lot of times kids like that in high school and college don't have a good move because they haven't had that many people on first base to worry about. And he had an excellent move when he came to the Phillies, and he still has a good move, and it's probably even a little better now. Ruthman has the sign from Pocaroba. And here's the pitch to Boa. Fly ball to right field. Matthews has to go back to get it. He's on the warning track. He hauls it down. Boa about five feet away from putting that ball out of here down the right field side. Fair by some 20 feet. But it's just an out, and Bake McBride hangs on at first. One out in the inning. The batter is Mike Schmidt. Well, Dick Ruthman, of course, is married to the twin sister who... The other sister married Tommy Hutton. And uh, they are, of course, identical twins. And we always feel like we're running into Debbie when we see Sue. Sue is uh, Dick's wife and Debbie Tommy's wife. Here's Schmidt batting at 280. Mike with nine lifetime home runs in this ballpark. This is, of course, a good hitter's ballpark. 
169 home runs here last year, high in the National League. Ruth and Mrs. Lowe outside with a fastball, ball one. Schmidt has homered eight times, leads the Phillies in RBIs with 27. Ruth been at the belt. Here's his pitch to Schmidt. And the curveball catches the outside corner a strike. We don't have a final yet on that Dodger San Francisco game. Our ticker has not reported anything since the seventh inning, at which time it was Los Angeles 2, San Francisco 1. Throw to first, McBride is back. Bert Hooten pitching that game against Vita Blue. And the pitchers are up at Pittsburgh tonight. Rudy May for the Expos and Jim Rooker for the Pirates. There goes McBride. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Throw to second base. Fake is safe. Stolen base McBride. Well, Bake McBride had two stolen bases last night, and he picks up another one tonight. Stolen base number eight for McBride. The count is a ball and two strikes on Schmidt. Mike swinging and missing at that pitch, and Bake getting into second base. He had a good jump. One out of the inning. Ruthven now will check McBride at second. Pitch on the way to Schmidt. It's up a little bit high. Two balls and two strikes. American League action this afternoon is final. Toronto beat New York 4-1. to The winner was Jim Clancy. And the loser, Ed Figueroa. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Schmidt. Low and outside with a breaking ball. And we've got a full count. Cleveland over Baltimore, 6-2. David Clyde, the winner. He's undefeated at 3-0. Mike Flanagan, the loser, at 5-4. Boston over Detroit, 1-0, as Jim Rice's sixth-inning home run, his 17th of the year, stood up to make a winner of Louis Tiant and a loser of Morris. The Kansas City-Minnesota game postponed by rain. Here's the payoff pitch to Schmidt. It's a breaking ball. Ground ball to shortstop. McBride will stay at second. The throw across is in time for the out. Schmidt got a breaking ball, and he grounded out to shortstop. Darrell Chaney playing there tonight, and we've got two down. The batter, Greg Luzinski. Here's one other American League final. Oakland defeated Chicago 4-3. Bob Lacey the winner. Jim Willoughby the loser. Dave Revering and Mitchell Page each hit Oakland home runs. Greg Luzinski's average down to 246. Pitch to the big right-handed batter is a curveball, and it's over for a strike. Danny Ozark said tonight this is the worst slump he has ever seen Luzinski suffer through. The ball is 0 for 11 and 2 for his last 30. Here's the one strike pitch to him. It's a changeup, but it bounced. One ball and one strike. In his lifetime, Ruthven has won 38 games and lost 54. Has a 4.16 lifetime earned run average. Twenty-seven-year-old right-hander is at the belt. Here's his one-one pitch to the ball. A curve ball catches the corner on the outside. A ball and two strikes to Lozinski. Greg was off to a pretty good start this year, Chris. Yeah, he was off to a good start, and he's just been struggling a lot. Uh, Ruthven is getting his breaking ball over. It's sometimes a slider, sometimes a curve. It's a combination, really. He used to call kind of a swerve, and he's been getting it over so far. Here's his one-two pitch to the ball, and that is the breaking pitch, and he just missed outside. Two and two never seen him do that before he kind of dropped down on Lazinski and kind of came sidearm almost and he's always been straight over the top with everything he threw and that's a, a definite new wrinkle there in his pitching two balls and two strikes on Lazinski two outs in the inning here's the pitch fastball call third strike the ball is out of there and the inning is over for the Phillies no runs one hit and one left at the end of a half inning the Phillies nothing Braves coming up the purchase of selected General Electric major appliances, General Electric is giving away a U.S. savings bond. Bonds away! That's from now until May 31st. You know, gentlemen prefer bonds. You can get a great General Electric major appliance and use the savings bond to help finance a trip. Bond voyage. Or use the bond to buy something great. Like chocolate-covered bond bonds? So see your GE dealer today. Bonds high! Jenkintown Electric Discount Appliances, 220 York Road in Jenkintown. <laughs> There's a demanding cat around. He's at your Lincoln Mercury dealers, and he wants these dealers to sell every Mercury in stock. Every one. That means you have a great chance to get into any one of his fine cars right now. From the full-size Mercury marquee, right through his Cougars, Zephyrs, Monarchs, and Bobcats. They're all up for grabs right now. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer quick. 
because that cat means business. At the sign of the cat. Okay, fans, we all know the Phillies are number one when it comes to performance on the field. But do you know who's the number one water treatment company in the world? It's Culligan, with dealerships in 100 countries. Your local Culligan man is the recognized expert at seeing water conditioning needs, especially if your water has that funny mineral taste or chlorine smell. Call your local Culligan dealership for a free water analysis. There's no obligation. By the way, you can buy or rent a Culligan unit. So just look for Culligan under C in the white pages and start enjoying Culligan conditioned water for your whole family. And we'd like to thank the very alert newsroom at KYW for phoning us to tell that the Dodgers did win that game over the Giants today, 3-1. to one. And the winning pitcher was Bert Hooten, and the losing pitcher, Vida Blue, only Blue's second defeat of the year. They're hanging on our every word back there, Chris, just the way we like it. it must definitely be a slow night in the KYW newsroom for them to be hanging on our every word. <laughs> No score here in this ball game. We're in the last of the first inning, and Jerry Royster will lead it off against Jim Lonborg. Lonnie has not pitched since the Atlanta, excuse me, the Houston series, suffering a back injury when he slid into second base. Danny Ozark tonight said it was my bright idea to have him try to steal a base. And Lonnie suffered a slight back injury, and he'll be testing it out here tonight. Danny said he doesn't really expect Lonnie to go any more than five or six innings. Right-hander into his windup, and the first pitch is high, ball one. Royster is batting at 268. Tom Burgess coaching at third base for the Braves, and Pete Ward at first. One nothing pitch on the way to the right-handed batter. It's top foul behind the plate, out of play. One ball and one strike on Royster. Royster has some power, but he has only one home run this year and has knocked in nine. Before coming to the majors, he led the Pacific Coast League in batting in 75 with a 3.33 average out of the Dodger farm. Here's the 1-1 pitch, and he pops another foul straight back out of play. When this series concludes tomorrow, Larry Christensen will pitch against right-hander Preston Hanna. And when the Phillies come back home Monday night for that big Memorial Day show, Jim Cott, left-hander, will go against hard-throwing right-handed rookie Don Robinson. Here's the one-two pitch to Royster. A slider is outside, two and two. Braves have won six of their last eight ball games in this ballpark, but they're still in last place in the National League West. Bobby Cox said tonight it looks like a legitimate three-team race. Here is a pop-up making the call as second baseman Davey Johnson on the dirt, and he takes it for the out. Royster pops out to Johnson playing second again tonight, and that's the first out of the inning. Here's Brian Asselstein. Left-handed batter hitting at 277. Asselstein playing in center field tonight, and they've got Barry Bunnell playing at third, moving Cheney over to shortstop. Pat Rocket out of the lineup tonight. He has a very low batting average. Pitch is over for a called strike to Asselstein. Hank Aaron is going to begin tutoring Rocket and batting on Monday. Here's the one-strike pitch to Asselstein. It bounces in the dirt. One ball and one strike. Rod Gilbert still has a sore arm, and he's not in there. That doesn't make the Phillies sad. He hit 349 against Philadelphia pitching last year. The 1-1 one -one to Asselstein is a high fly ball down the left field line. Luzinski shading him the other way, goes into foul ground and can't get it. The ball was playable in foul ground, but because a left-handed batter was up there, ball swinging around the other way, and he couldn't get to it. Just watching Lonnie with the first couple of batters, he appears to be throwing without any problem, nice and loose and easy. I talked to him the other day in Chicago, and he said he probably could have pitched uh, in Chicago, but Danny wanted him to pitch against Atlanta here and then set him up to go against Los Angeles next weekend at Veterans Stadium because of their right-handed hitting lineup. So he felt that he was ready to go earlier in the week and that he shouldn't have any problem at all with the back. Well, we've got some great games coming up at Veterans Stadium on this next homestand. Lineborg misses high. It's 2-2 two and two because the Pirates started out, as you know, and then, as Chris mentioned, the Dodgers for the weekend. And after that, the San Francisco Giants are coming in. And then you'll see these Braves on the last weekend of that homestand. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. Check swing called third strike. Fastball. Asselstein strikes out. Second out of the inning as Lonnie gets his first strikeout. And the hitter will be Gary Matthews. Well, Matthews is batting 286, but in this ballpark, he's batting 409. Strong right-handed batter. Doug Harvey, the home plate umpire, has given every indication tonight that he's going to be a pitcher's umpire. Both Lonborg and Ruthven are really getting the big plate, the corners, and that pitch to Asselstein was 
could have been outside. And a couple of pitches that he called on some Philadelphia hitters in the first inning, so you better be swinging. Lundborg into his windup. First pitch to Matthews. Right in there, a strike called. Matthews had one hit and six tries facing Lonnie last year. Jim's lifetime record against the Braves is six and three. Here's the one strike pitch, and it's high. One ball and one strike. So the pitching matchups for the rest of that Pirate Series Tuesday night, it'll be Steve Carlton against Burt Blylevin. And Wednesday night, Randy Lurch will come back against John Candelaria. Wind up in the 1 1 pitch. It bounces on a changeup. Two balls and a strike to Matthews. Gary leads the Braves in homers with five, but the RBI leader by a long shot is the man on deck, Jeff Burroughs. He has 23 of them. 2 1 pitch on the way. It bounces again. And Lonnie runs a 3-1 count on Gary Matthews. The bases are empty. There are two outs in the first inning. And this ball game is scoreless. Prior to the ball game here tomorrow, there's going to be a home run hitting contest. Schmidt, Luzinski, and Hebner are going to participate for the Phillies. Here is a pitch that sails on Lonborg, a very high fastball, and Matthews walks. So Matthews gets the board, and Jeff Burrows will bat. In that home run contest tomorrow, it'll be Burroughs, Matthews, and Dale Murphy. And the winner is going to receive $500. Here's Jeff Burroughs batting at 346. One of the top averages in the National League. Three homers and the club high 23 runs driven in. Lundborg turning around to check his defense now. Gary Matthews has a habit of throwing his helmet away all the time and... He did it twice last night, and they made him put it on again. The, the league this year has said that the base runners have to have a batting helmet. He keeps throwing it away, and they get to stop the game until they go get it for him. On board from the stretch now. Pitch on the way to Burroughs, and it's low inside, ball one. Braves are above 500 at home. They've won 10 and lost 9. But on the road, they suffer. They are 6-15 and 15 away from home. The Phillies know what that's like. Their record is just exactly opposite home and away right now. Swing and a miss by Burroughs. One ball and one strike. The Phillies at the vet are 13 and 6. On the road, they are 6 and 13. 1-1 one, one count to Jeff Burroughs. Strong right-handed batter. Former American League most valuable player back in 74. Pitch on the way from Lundborg. Ground foul tapped behind the plate toward the Phillies dugout. Last year, Burroughs was second best in the National League with home runs. He hit 41. And he had 114 RBIs. That ranked him fourth among National League batters last year. Last season, of course, his first in the National League after five years in the American circuit. The one-two pitch on the way. Slider misses outside. Two and two did not miss by much. Lonnie's record this year is 4-3. and three. Jim has a 3.80 earned run average. He and Ruthman have an ERA almost identical. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Call third strike on the inside corner, and the Braves' first is over. No runs, no hits, one man left on base. At the end of one, no score. Now time for a tasty break. There's only one fever just about everyone in Philadelphia wants to catch, and that's Philly's fever. Just like there's only one package cake Philadelphians want, too. Tasty cake. Like the fresh-baked taste of Tasty Cake Chocolate Creamies. Two delicious layers of moist chocolate cake filled with tasty vanilla cream. You couldn't ask for a more mouth-watering treat. So ask for family packs of Tasty Cake Chocolate Creamies. They're all the good things wrapped up in one. Well, the Phillies are back home starting on Monday night against the Pittsburgh Pirates, and that ball game will begin at 8.35, but actually keep in mind 7.30 because that's when all the pregame treats begin, and we've got a bunch of them for you. The U.S. Marine President's Drum and Bugle Corps is going to entertain before the game, and it's also Glassboro night, so the Glassboro High School Band will perform for that ball game, and you'll want to come early and stay late because following the ball game, a big fireworks show, new, different, and exciting this year. And sandwiched in between, big ball game with the Phillies and the Pirates. Jim Cott to pitch against Don Robinson and that one. So we'll see you Monday night at Veterans Stadium. And we want to note a new starting time for you on the Monday, June 5th game when the San Francisco Giants are in town. Mark that one down as an 8-10 start. That's Monday, 
June 5th. The Phillies and the Giants starting at 8.10. The game will be on national television that night, blacked out in the Philadelphia area. Leadoff man for the Phillies in the second is Richie Hebner, up against Dick Ruthman, who winds, and here's the first pitch to Hebner, swing and a foul back to the screen. Hebner batting at 265. Hebner, Maddox, and Boone to face Ruthman in the second inning of a scoreless ball game. Pitch on the way to Richie is just a little bit high. One ball, one strike. Phillies will be very glad to get back off this road trip and play in the next two weeks at Veteran Stadium. Curveball misses inside. Two and one the count to Hebner. Phillies will actually be home three of the next four weeks with only a week in California sandwiched in between. Two-one pitch on the way to Hebner. Misses low and inside. Another breaking ball. And a three-one count to Hebner. After Richie Bats, we'll have a station break for you. Dick Ruthman in his sixth National League season, 27 years of age, and here's the 3-1 to Hebner, swing and a miss, strike two. Ruthman had a serious ankle injury last year. He suffered at May 1st at St. Louis. It required surgery, and he was expected to be out three months, but he came back in two. Of all things, he was running out an infield hit. Here's a 3-2 fastball that Hebner fouls back over top the screen. Three balls and two strikes on Richie Hebner leading off the Phillies' second inning. Last couple of days, the Phillies haven't scored many runs. They scored two last night on Jerry Martin's homer. And in that wind-up game at Chicago, they scored just one run. Again, the 3-2 to Hebner. It's a breaking ball, and he popped him up. It's foul behind the plate. Pocaroba is back, but he doesn't have any room. It's in the crowd. Maybe that wasn't a breaking ball. Might have been Ruthven's changeup, but Hebner fouled it out of play. He's come up with a good changeup. Uh, he had a decent changeup when he was with the Phillies and talking to him the other day, he said that it's really been a good pitch for him. It's been his out pitch. He'll throw it a uh, 3-2 count or sometimes when he's behind in the count and kind of take a hitter by surprise with him. That's what he tried to do with Hebner just then. Here's the windup by Ruthman and the pitch to Hebner. Fastball, swing and a miss. He struck him out. We pause for station identification along the Phillies baseball network. This is KYW Philadelphia, 65 degrees cloudy at Independence Mall. Mostly cloudy tonight and tomorrow morning is 8.01. Ruthven with his second strikeout to start this second inning, and here's Gary Maddox. Gary, the one Phil who has been hot lately, went three for four last night, and Maddox has seven hits in his last 12 times at the plate. Gary has raised his average to 291. Pitch on the way to the right-handed batter. A fastball popped down the right field line and is going foul out of play into the Atlanta picnic area. They have the picnic area here uh, down the right and left field lines quite similar to the ones we have in Philadelphia. Not as well populated, I think I should add. Pitch on the way to Maddox, low and outside a ball. One ball and one strike. Braves have been averaging about 14,000 a ball game this year. Here's the 1-1 one -one to Gary Maddox. A strike on the outside corner as Ruthman poured the fastball in knee high. 1-2 and two the count to Maddox. Gary has 15 runs driven in. His only homer came in this series at Chicago. A swing and a miss by Gary. He strikes out. It was a fastball. So Ruthman has picked up three strikeouts. And an inning in two thirds, and Bob Boone coming to the plate. Booney batting at 258. Ruthman getting his 10th start this year. He's pitched two complete games, including one shutout. Here's the pitch to Boone, a breaking ball. And the pitch is up high for a ball. Right-hander winds. Here's the next pitch. Another breaking ball high. Two and nothing. This is the 11th game on the road trip for the Phillies. Should have been the 12th, but there was a rain out in Chicago. The Phillies have won two and lost eight. Very rough road trip. The 2-0 to Boone is a fastball low. Ball three. Ruthven falls behind Boone, three and nothing. Hasn't walked anybody yet. Has three strikeouts. Here's the 3-0 pitch. Swing and a miss. Booney went for a pitch that was up high. Had the green light on 3-0 and didn't get it. 
Three balls and a strike to the right-handed batting Bob Boone. Third high on the team in RBIs with 21. Here's the pitch to him, a called strike. Full count to Bob Boone, batting with two outs and nobody on base in the Phillies' second scoreless ball game. Here's the pitch. A little pop-up in shallow left center field. The shortstop Cheney is back out there, and he squeezes it for the out. The Phillies are retired 1-2-3 in the second. At the end of one and a half, no score. Chrysler LeBaron's a good combination. It's a car size for today's living, yet loaded with luxury. It gives you your money's worth of sensibly sized style. And your choice of three models, a young stylish two-door, a classic four-door, and the new LeBaron Town & Country Wagon. The difference between this wagon and any other is luxury. Why drive a car that doesn't feel great? Why not get your money's worth of style and luxury? When LeBaron gives you all this, why settle for anything less? See it at your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer today. Biff Pokoroba leads off the second for the Braves. Pokoroba to be followed by Murphy and Bunnell. Scoreless ball game. Jim Lundborg pitching for the Phillies. He picked up two strikeouts in the first inning. Pokoroba, a switch hitter up there as a left-handed batter. Half swing at the first pitch. Fouls it off strike one. Biff is batting at 236. He's not a bad catcher. He certainly did a good job with Phil Necro last night. And the Braves have signed him to a long-term contract. Bonnie Wines, here's his next pitch. It misses low. One ball and one strike to Pokoroba. He has not homered this year. He has driven in 10 runs. The 1-1 pitch is a fly ball. Pretty well hit into left center field. Greg Luzinski getting over, and he one-hands it for the out on the run. Greg Luzinski went into left center field to haul down the fly ball by Pokoroba. Out number one in the second. Next batter for the Braves, Dale Murphy. Bull's not hitting right now, so he's going to take a little defense out there. That was a pretty good play he made. He was playing a, a left-handed hitter in that direction, but he had to run a long way for it. He made a good play on it. Dale Murphy, first baseman, batting at 2-11. A good-looking prospect. The pitch to him, over for a strike call. Bobby Cox saying tonight it looks like he's starting to hit. And they liken him to San Francisco's Jack Clark a year ago at this time. Clark, a good-looking outfielder who all of a sudden this year has really blossomed. Here's the one-strike pitch, and it's popped foul over top the screen off the changeup. Nothing in two to count to Murphy. Remember, our Daily News home run payoff inning tonight will be the fifth. Harry Callis will be here by that time, and we hope we have a winner for you. We did last night. Jerry Martin made a winner of Connie Knight. Here's the 0-2 pitch. It's slowing outside a ball. Murphy was originally a catcher, but they have changed him into a first baseman. Before they did that, they were thinking that Jeff Burroughs might be brought in from the outfield, a man first base this year. The one-two pitch, breaking ball high, two and two. Murphy out of Portland, Oregon, only 22 years of age. Hit 305 last year at Richmond. Swing and a miss. A slider, and Murphy has struck out. So Lonborg gets his third strikeout. Each pitcher's gotten three so far. And the batter is Barry Bunnell. Bunnell, an ex-Philly, batting at 236. He never actually played for the Phils, but the Braves got him, along with Jim Eshian, for Dick Allen and Johnny Oates in May of 75. Bunnell, a right-handed batter, and the first pitch to him is a fastball in for a strike. Bunnell playing at third base tonight. Bobby Cox says he is not a good defensive third baseman, but he is a pretty good defensive outfielder. Here's the pitch to him. Ground ball, two hop to Schmidt. It bobbled out of his glove, but he picked it up there, handed and threw him out. That was a nice play by Schmidt. That ball never left the air after it bobbled out of his glove. Braves retired in order in the second at the end of two. No score. I used to think of the George machine at Gerard Bank as my own private money game. If I forgot to go to the bank or needed cash on a weekend, there he was, proceed to go and collect $200. Man, I own that withdrawal button. You know what I mean? And then I looked at all the buttons. Wow. Checking, savings, deposits, loans, transfers, balances. I got a whole bank right here. Now I do my everyday banking with George. I push the buttons and I run the bank. George lets you be the banker. Gerard Bank, 
We're there when you need us. These Atlanta Braves are headed for Philadelphia, and you can see them the weekend of June 9th, 10th, and 11th. And on the 11th, that's going to be Jacket Day Sunday afternoon. Jackets compliments of English leather, free from the Phillies for all kids 14 or under. And remember, the start of that series is a big one, Friday night, June 9th. It'll be teen night. All teams getting a dollar off box and reserve seats for that Braves game at 8.05. But come out early that night, a great pregame show featuring the Tramps with Disco Inferno. Here's Davey Johnson to lead it off for the Phillies. Johnson batting at 122. Davey, ex-Brave, had a tough time here last night, struck out a couple of times. Ruthven misses with a slider outside ball one. Davey, one home run this year. That was his grand slam. He has knocked in seven. Wind up in the pitch by Ruthven as a fastball pops foul back out of play over top of the screen. The ball and a strike to Dave Johnson will be followed by Lonborg and McBride as the Phillies bat in the third. This ball game scoreless. Here's a fastball grounded to third base. Barry Bennell has it. His throw across is in time for the out. Johnson grounds out to third. Well, the Phillies got a leadoff single by Bake McBride, and he then stole second, but Ruthman has mowed down the lineup in the meantime, and here's Jim Lonborg. Lonnie batting at 214. He has three hits and three runs driven in. Lonnie bats him like he throws right-handed. Ruthven winds. Here's the pitch to Lonborg. Swing and a miss on a fastball. Strike one. It's Doug Harvey at the plate tonight. Veteran umpire who lives in San Diego. Here's the one strike pitch to Lonborg. Check swing, but it's a called strike, says Harvey. Nothing in two to Lonnie. No rain here in Atlanta today. They did have showers overnight. And, of course, batting practice for the Phillies curtailed by a shower last night. A Ruthven fastball misses low. It's one and two to Lonborg. Wind up and the pitch on the way. Swing and a ball tapped off the plate. They're going to call it a foul ball. It rolls toward third, but it's foul. So it's a ball and two strikes to Lonborg. The Montreal Expos have scored in all three innings of that ball game in Pittsburgh so far, and they lead it 6-1 to one as the Pirates bat in the last of the third. Rudy May pitching for the Expos. Jim Rooker knocked out of there in the third, and Bruce Keeson in, in relief. Larry Parry hit a home run for the Expos in the second with one on his fourth of the year. The pitch to Lonborg is a breaking ball just outside, two and two. And the final from this afternoon, the Dodgers over the Giants, three to one, Burt Hooten beating Vita Blue. First time Blue has lost a game in more than a month. The two-two pitch to Lonborg, hit hard to center field, getting back is Asselstein, and he takes it for the out. Hey, Lonnie hit that right on the button, but Asselstein got back and made the catch for the out. That's two outs with the bases empty. And Bake McBride will bat. Well, Bake has the lone hit in the ball game for the Phillies. He singled the right field and, as mentioned, got a stolen base, his eighth of the year, and his third in this series. Left-handed batting Bake McBride coming up. This ball game still scoreless. We're in the top of the third inning. And this series will conclude tomorrow afternoon at 2.15 when Larry Christensen faces Preston Hanna. The latter, a young right-hander who is 3-0 this year. Here's Ruthman's wind-up, and a fastball is over for a strike call. The Braves will continue a homestand after the Phillies leave. The Cincinnati Reds will be in town starting Monday. Breaking ball high. One ball, one strike to McBride. Make batting 294. He got off to a slow start this year, and people were wondering when he would hit 300, but he hasn't yet. But the assault is on, and here's a line drive base hit into right center field. Make McBride takes the wide turn. Here he goes on into second. Here comes the throw. Safe double McBride. Line drive double for McBride, his second hit of the ball game. Well, Big McBride, uh, Brian Asselstein, the center fielder, did all he could with that ball, and he got it in the alley a little bit. He cut it off and made a good play to second. And I, think, I was talking to Bake the other day about the way he's running right now, and I've never seen him run as well as he is right now, even when he was going good with the Cardinals before his injury. And 
he agrees. He doesn't think that he's ever run any better. And, boy, he was just flying going into second base just then. He never did it at all. So Bakes is second with two down, and the batter is Larry Boa. Pitch on the way to Larry is a ground foul outside of first base. Strike one to Boa. Larry very nearly hit a home run in his first at bat tonight. A very deep fly ball to right field. It was hauled down on the warning track by Gary Matthews. Boa has slipped for the moment under the 300 mark. He is at 299. So the Phillies have a runner at second with two down. Their second hit of the ball game, and Bake has them both. Stretch in the pitch by Ruthman. Curveball high. What do we call that pitch? A slurve? He used to call it a swerve because swerve. it was a combination of a slider and a curve, and he could never figure out what the heck he was throwing. And it, it breaks bigger than a slider, but not as big as a curveball. So you used to kind of call it a swerve. Here's the 1-1 pitch to Boa. Just misses. Well, I think when the slider was first uh, invented, they used to call it a nickel curve, didn't they? Yeah, well, that's what it is, really. It just kind of breaks almost on the same plane, kind of sideways. And it has the same spin as a fastball, and that's what makes it so hard to detect for a hitter. I can remember for years and years my old friend Jimmy Dykes talking about the nickel curve. Here's a fastball off the handle of the bat, looped into center field for a base hit. Bake McBride rounding third. The throw to the plate is offline, and Bake scores. Phillies lead one to nothing. Boa goes to second. Boa got jammed, but he singled the center field, and he picks up RBI in number 10, and the Phillies are on the board. Larry well, really has been one of the few Phillies that has hit the ball consistently well on the road trip. He's driven in some runs, and that time he didn't get it. He didn't hit the ball hard, but he kind of got it in on him a little bit. It was a good pitch by Ruthman. He swung it into center field and took second base when uh, Athelstein kind of foolishly threw home trying to get McBride, and that sets up another run at second now. Two out in the inning, and the Phillies lead. The batter is Mike Schmidt, who grounded out to short. So Boa at second base, he went there on the throw following his single. And the batter is Schmidt. Ruthman has his sign from Pocaroba. Pitch on the way to Mike. Very high fly ball. Medium distance right field. It's going to be caught by Matthews a few steps toward the line. He takes it for the third out. The Phillies score a run in the third on two hits. And they leave one man on base. At the end of two and a half, Bills lead Atlanta one to nothing, and now it's time for a tasty break. Why do the same kind of people who love those fantastic Phillies also love Tasty Cake? Because both bring out the kid that's there in all of us. Like the delicious taste of Tasty Cake chocolate cupcakes, cream-filled cupcakes, and cream-filled coffee cake. For kids from 9 to 90, Tasty Cake and those fabulous Phillies are all the good things wrapped up in one. Play ball with Richard Buick Volvo in Newtown Square. King Richard's got it all. Buick's Opal's Volvo's leasing. Don't strike out. Save a bundle on all 1978 models. Drive a little, save a lot. Listen to this. A brand new 1978 Buick Electra. Air conditioning, power steering, power brakes, and more. Only $65.99. And talk about leasing. A new 1978 Regal Coupe with factory air. $139 a month. Three-year open-end lease. That's King Richard for a lion-hearted deal on Westchester Pike in Newtown Square. Today, we Phillies fans begin the season when families from all over get together. Relatives, friends, and neighbors pitch horseshoes at picnics, polish the brass on their motorboats, drive to the shore and country, and celebrate the weekend with neighborly cookouts. It's part of the real spirit of America, and the people at Acme are proud to be a part of this spirit of friendship. From all your friends at Acme Super Saver to you, best wishes for a safe and happy holiday weekend. There is a left-handed batter to face Lundborg, carrying a 288 average. Lonnie misses high with a fastball, ball one. Caney, Ruthven, and Royster to bat in Atlanta's third inning. Wind up in the pitch. It is low. Two balls and no strikes. Lundborg winds. Here's the 2-0 pitch. It's a hard-hit ground ball. Davey Johnson gets it off his glove, but it bounces behind him, and safe at first base is Caney. Davey had to move sharply to his left. Got, a, got the ball actually in his glove, but it hopped behind him. And they are charging Johnson with an error. 
Cheney aboard on the air by Dave Johnson. Well, that brings Ruthven up in an obvious sacrifice situation, and the Phillies will be looking for it. Mike Schmidt has already started to come in from third base. Vic has one hit in 18 times this year, but I doubt he'll be swinging away here. Ruthven, a right-handed batter. Pitch on the way to him, squares around, drops it down the first base side, it rolls foul. Strike one to Ruthven. Phillies one to nothing, RBI Larry Boa, and that's the way we stand in the last half of the third inning. Larry Christensen, who missed his last start because of an attack of asthma, will be working here tomorrow afternoon against Preston Hanna. Unborg stretches. Here's the pitch to Ruthven. He takes it low a ball, and that time he did not indicate a bunt. The only final from National League Baseball this afternoon, the Dodgers over the Giants, 3-1. to one. American League finals, Boston over Detroit, 1-0. Toronto beat New York, 4-1. to one. Cleveland over Baltimore, 5-2. to two. Oakland 4, Chicago 3. One game was rained out, Kansas City at Minnesota. Ruthven handles the bat very well for a pitcher. In fact, he really prides himself in his hitting. He likes to hit. And it's the type of guy where you might let him bunt one time and then swing the bat the next time, which is what Cox did. Here's the 1-1 pitch to him. He's back to bunt again. He drops it down. Bone picks it up, throws the second safe. Everybody safe. That ball did not go down the first baseline very far. Booney was right on top of it, but his throw to second base did not have much on it for some reason. It died in front of Boa. Larry tried to take it on the hop, but already called safe was Darrell Cheney. A sacrifice for Ruthman and everybody safe. Well, that's one of those do-or-die plays, and Booney was off balance when he threw it. And that's why it didn't have the velocity on it that it might get. He kind of threw off the other leg in his attempt to get the runner at second. And couple of bad plays by the Phillies again, and they're in trouble. Nobody out on the inning. Runners at first and second, and now the Braves go to the top of the order. Here's Jerry Royster. Stretching the pitch to Royster, a fastball high, and he had squared around, not squared around, but actually choked up on the bat as if to drop a bunt. Royster popped out to Dave Johnson in his first at bat. Phillies lead it one to nothing, but the Braves threatening in their half of the third. Here's the one nothing pitch to Royster. He bunts third base side. Booney chasing it and rolls foul. Royster bunts foul to make the count one ball and one strike. Well, he was up there uh, in a sacrifice situation and almost got himself a base hit. He put a perfect bunt down the third baseline and just had a little bit of spin on it and rolled foul. It was very, very close to having bases loaded, nobody out. Royster started the run and out. He has to come back. We've got a one ball, one strike count. On the Atlanta infielder, Lonnie stretches. Here's the pitch to him. He's around the bunt again, but he bunts it foul and it went off the hand of Boone. One ball and two strikes. I think Booney took a piece of that on the meat hand. Doug Harvey talking to Bob. Nobody out in the Braves' third inning. Lonborg gave up a two-out walk in the first, retired them in order in the second. But an error, and uh, the Phillies' unsuccessful playing of that sacrifice has them in trouble here in the third. Here's the stretch. One-two pitch on the way to Royster. Fastball grounded foul outside of third. Well, here in Atlanta, they have something like our Daily News home run payoff, and this is their payoff inning. Ours tonight will be number five when the Phillies bat. One run, three hits, and an air for the Phillies. No runs, no hits for the Braves. On Borg stretches. Here's the pitch. It's a shot in the center field. Getting back is Maddox, and he catches that ball. Tagging at second base is Cheney. He will go to third base. Holding at first base is Ruthven. Jerry Royster hit a shot, but Maddox retreated to make the catch. That's out number one. And just a perfect example of why he is such a good outfielder. Gary Maddox has said many times how shallow he plays. Well, he was really playing shallow on Royster, and Royster hit the ball over his head, and he went back and made a tremendous play on that ball and saved Jim Lonmore all kinds of trouble. Next up, Brian Asselstein, left-handed batter. 
He took a called third strike in the first inning. Hunborg has three strikeouts tonight. Now we've got runners at the corners with one down. The pitch to Asselstein, a fastball high, ball one. Asselstein from Santa Barbara, California, 24 years of age. He was the Braves' first draft choice in the winter draft of 73. The pitch to him is a fastball low, and he swings and misses. One ball, one strike. Brian batting 274. According to Bobby Cox, he is going to be playing the majority of the games in center field, having beaten out Roland Office, who will probably be traded. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Ground ball to first, fielded there by Hebner. He can't get a hold of it. Finally, he does and steps on the bag, but a run crosses the plate. Hasselstein grounds out to Hebner, who bobbled that ball a couple of times, but he was right on the bag as he did it. And a run crossed the plate as that happened, giving Hasselstein his 10th run batted in, and the Braves have tied the ball game. That's the second out. Advancing to second base is Ruthman. Pritchie had ideas of going to second base and trying to go a 3-6-3 double play on that ball. Bruce, and of course the pitcher runs pretty well and Asselstein runs fair and in his haste to do that he picked the ball up and double dribbled it and dropped it a couple times and was just able to get the one out. Here's Gary Matthews at the plate. Pitch on the way to him is a pop fly, shallow right field, long run for Bake McBride. Out is Johnson but Bake will make the play and the inning is over so the Braves score a run without benefit of the hit. One run, no hits, one error, one man left on base. Harry Callis will have the play-by-play for you in a moment. At the end of three we're all even, 1-1. A luxury car ought to give you your money's worth of luxury. It ought to be big enough for you to stretch out in and have a smooth and easy ride. Chrysler Cordova gives you all that and more. You not only get options like Corinthian leather, but five different roof styles. Not to mention that great Chrysler engineering. The standard features like the lean burn engine that gives you better performance. Chrysler Cordova, the ultimate personal luxury car. See it at your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer and get your money's worth. Have you heard what's happening at Geno's? Oh, man, what's happening? Right now, you can get a Geno's Giant and regular fries for just 99 cents. Oh, right on. Eating Geno's Giant at Geno's. That's 99 paltry pennies for a delicious Geno's Giant and regular fries at participating Geno's restaurants. Hey, that's cool. Not cool. Hot. The hottest deal in town is Geno's Giant Deal. Yeah, big deal. Not big, gigantic. Geno's Giant Deal. Two all-beef burgers, two. Right, a Geno's Giant. Two all-beef burgers piled high with all the trimmings and Geno's special sauce. And then Geno's adds their crispy fries, all for just 99 cents. Makes sense to me. Right again, 99 cents for Geno's Giant Deal. But you gotta hurry, offer expires June 4th. Now how do you feel? Eat it good. Eat it good. At Geno's. Hey, you know, fella, you you got a pretty good voice. I've been practicing. We move to the fourth inning of a 1-1 ball game, and before play resumes in the fourth, let's pause for station identification along the Phil's Baseball Network. This is KYW Philadelphia, 64 degrees, cloudy at Independence Mall, mostly cloudy tonight and tomorrow morning. It is 8.29. Leading off for the Phillies here in the fourth will be Greg Luzinski. The ball was called out on strikes his first time up. 1-1 one, one ball game. Phillies have three hits. The Braves have none. Braves got a run without benefit of a hit in that third inning. Dick Ruthven ready to work to Greg Luzinski. Ruthven has been throwing a good fastball tonight. Here's the pitch to the ball. Fastball grounded to the right side. Jerry Royster, the second baseman, has it and throws. And Luzinski is out on one pitch. One down, that'll bring on Rich Hebner. He struck out his first time up. <laughs> Ruthven has won two. He's lost four this year. Carrying in an earned run mark of 3.79. He has pitched one shutout. Hebner steps in. 1-1 one, one ball game, fourth inning. Wind up by Ruthven. Here's the pitch on the way to Hebner. And it's over for a strike call to change up. One strike to count to Hebner. One strike pitch to him. Curveball is low and inside for a ball, and it's one and one. 
Ruthven, when he was first signed by the Phils, had an exceptional curveball. Say that was his out pitch at Fresno State. The 1-1 pitch is a breaking ball. It's over for a strike call, and he's in front of Hebner, a ball and two strikes. Pitching very, very well tonight. He's getting his fastball over at good velocity. He's breaking ball over and using his changeup very effectively. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Fastball. It's a little bit low for a ball. It's 2-2. Two and two. two balls and two strikes to count to Hebner. One out of no base runners. Philly's got their run on a double by Bake McBride. An RBI single by Larry Boa. 2-2 two, two pitch. Fastball over for a strike call. Hebner is called out on strike. Fourth strikeout for Ruth, and that's two down in the fourth, and that'll bring on Gary Maddox. He went down swinging his first time up. Maddox has picked up nine hits in his last 22 at bat. On this disastrous trip, which has seen the Phillies lose eight out of ten, Maddox has played well, as has Larry Boa. Ground ball back up the middle, a base hit for Gary Maddox. Not sharply hit, but a seeing eye ground ball up the middle for a base hit. Philly's fourth hit off Dick Ruthven. That'll bring on Bob Boone, who popped up his first time up. Maddox might try to steal a base here. Gary has stolen nine this year. He's been caught twice. Ruthven has a real good move to first base, and he'll sense that, and he'll keep Maddox close. Here's a pitch to Boone, a fastball that misses low for a ball. One and nothing to count to Bob Boone. Maddox takes a pretty good size lead. Throw to first base. Close play. Gary has to dive back in safely. Now the stretch by Ruthen, the 1-0 pitch. Pitch out, nothing on. Pitch out was fairly close to a strike, but the count is two balls and no strikes to Bob Boone. Here's a stretch by Ruthen. 2-0 pitch. Swing and a very high fly ball. Right center of field. Brian Asselstein is right there waiting. He makes the catch. And the Phillies are down in the fourth. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. We go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. It's Phil's one, Atlanta one. Plymouth Arrow gets great mileage. 39 on the highway, 29 in the city, and has a low sticker price. 3841, excluding taxes and destination charges. And features like reclining buckets, tinted glass, and fold down rear seat. So when you get a Plymouth Arrow, you get your money's worth. The mileage is an EPA estimate for a manual transmission arrow with 1.6 liter engine. Your mileage may differ. Plymouth Arrow's great mileage, price, and features give you your money's worth. See it today at your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. I must be seeing double. Those guys riding that bicycle built for two both look like Ed McMahon. Right you are, Virginia. But then I'm always beside myself when pick a pair time rolls around. That's when everybody says my favorite word twice. Budweiser? Right again. Just look for me, uh, both of me, on the pick a pair display at your favorite store. Take home not one, but two six packs of the King of Beers. And this year, pick a pair time will be rolling from now right through the 4th of July weekend. That'll give you plenty of great times to enjoy the easy taste of a Budweiser. Or two. Guess I'll be seeing you real soon, Ed. A both of you, in fact. Uh, don't forget to say it twice. Budweiser, Budweiser. Smart girl. Right, partner? Yes, indeed, Edward. Now let's pedal these six packs <laughs> Bye, fellas. See you soon. A farewell, my chickadee. You say bye, bye, bye. You say bye, bye, bye. Oh, and I said Bush St. Louis. Leading off of the Atlanta Braves, bottom half of the fourth inning, Jeff Burroughs. He was called out on strikes his first time up. Burroughs having a great year. Came into the game hitting 346. 1-1 one, one ball game, bottom half of the fourth inning. Wind up by Lomborg, and here's the pitch to Burroughs. Swing and a line shot to left field. Fair ball down the left field line. Luzinski chasing. Burroughs on his way to second. He goes in standing with a double. So Burroughs gets the Braves' first hit off Lomborg. A line double down the left field line. Jeff Burroughs is uh, really having a good year. Of course, is a tremendous candidate right now for the All-Star team. And the voting going on right now. And Harry Callis already has an All-Star in his family, from what I understand. Well, that's right, Chris. <laughs> Brad, my nine-year-old son, has made the Devon Stratford All-Star team, along with teammate Brian Carr, a shortstop. 
which was your position at Marple Newtown, right? That's true. I made a few all-star teams, but it was very nice for Brad. Congratulations. And obviously a much better athlete than you. <laughs> First pitch to Pocaroba is a hard shot in the right field base hit. Burrows rounding third, being held there. The throw comes into the plate, a good thing. Bake made a good throw to the plate. But Pocaroba has grounded a single to right, and the Braves have runners at first and third, and nobody out. Burroughs does not run particularly well, and third base coach Tom Burgess wisely elected to hold him at third. Bake made a strong throw, and that'll bring on Dale Murphy. Even though this is a grass and dirt field, that ball was really smoked to right field, and it got to McBride real quick. And if Burroughs had tried to score, there was no chance. That would have been really foolish to send him. Here's the big rookie, Dale Murphy. Runners at first and third, nobody out. And he looks at a strike called on the inside corner. Pocaroba came into this game hitting 236. He always seems to hit well against the Phils. He looks like a good hitter. And we play him. Stretch and the one-strike pitch. Swing, he chased a high fastball. Nothing in two to count to Dale Murphy. Talking to Dick Roosman about him, Harry, he, he really likes him a lot, especially as a receiver. He says he's a good catcher. He, Works well with him, sets up the hitters well, and he says he's a very underrated player. If he was playing somewhere else, you know, where the team got publicity, you'd hear more about him. Now the stretch by Lombard. Two-strike pitch, a breaking ball is high for a ball, and it's one ball and two strikes. Jeff Burrows at third base, Biff Pocaroba at first base, and nobody out. 1-1 one, one ball game, bottom of the fourth. Lombard ready, here's the stretch. 1-2 pitch. Swing and a hard ground ball to third. Schmidt comes home. They have Burroughs hung up. Looney chases him down and tags him out. So Schmidt, rather than conceding a run, decided to come home. They had Burroughs dead to right. Rays have runners at first and second. One down. Burroughs out. Mike Schmidt to Bob Boone. Murphy safe at first on a fielder's choice, and Pocaroba moves up to second. With the tail end of the order coming up, Chris, I, I think it's not a bad play. Cut off the go-ahead run. It is a good play, especially the way the Phillies have been struggling to score runs. And when you have a guy that dead to rights as they had Jeff Burroughs, you might as well go to the plate and get him. And like, like you said, it's the bottom of the order, and you don't expect to get hurt that bad with these hitters coming up. Barry Bunnell, the batter, grounded out his first time up. Here's a pitch by Lomborg. High and inside, he has to lean away from the fastball. Ball one. One and nothing to count to Bunnell. Pocaroba at second base, Murphy at first base, and one out. Bottom of the fourth, we're tied at one. Lomborg stretches. 1-0 pitch. Swing and a ground ball to third. Might be two to Johnson. One relay. Yes, they turned the double play. So the Phillies get out of a big jam in the fourth. As Bunnell grounds into an inning-ending double play. No runs, two hits. No errors. One left. After four, it spills one, braves one. a trip to the bank and a trip to the post office. I've got this new thing going with George Bank by phone from Gerard Bank. Just paid a month's worth of bills, did a whole pile of banking. I even gave myself a loan. Oh, sure. A few other banks have pay by phone, but Gerard lets me pay and bank by phone. You know, it's almost like having a Gerard Bank right here in my kitchen. Ask for a demonstration of George Bank by phone at any Gerard Bank office. Well, the Phillies will be back at the friendly confines of Veterans Stadium beginning Monday night against the Big Bad Buckos from Pittsburgh. Monday night's game time, 8.35, but plan to be on hand early. Pre-game ceremonies will include the U.S. Marines President's Drum and Bugle Corps performing before the game, as well as the Glassboro High School Band. It'll be Glassboro night. And after the game, dazzling fireworks show. Totally different than the ones which you're accustomed to seeing at the Vet. They'll plan to be on hand on Monday night. Plenty of tickets remain for that game, as well as the remaining two in the Pirates series, Tuesday and Wednesday at 7.35. Pirates will be followed in by the Los Angeles Dodgers, Friday night, June 2nd at 8.05, Saturday afternoon at 2.15. And Sunday at 1.30. 
Well, fans, this is it. Time for another Daily News home run payoff. And now you can win even more money because every hit pays off. Davey Johnson leads off in our home run payoff inning, takes a breaking ball high for a ball. He's batting for Chaz Hunter of Philadelphia. A single pays $20 plus four tickets to a future game. Here's a pitch on the way to Johnson. Swing and a high pop-up on the right side of the infield. Dale Murphy, the first baseman, puts it away. Davey Johnson is out one down in the fifth, and Chaz Hunter of Philadelphia will get four reserve seat tickets to a future Phillies game. If a batter should triple, that would mean $100 plus tickets to a future game, and you still win $1,000 for a home run, $5,000 for a grand slam. Use the entry coupon appearing every day in the Daily News. The more times you enter, the better your chance. Jim Lombard batting for R. Lee Steiner of Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Bouncing ball to third. Barry Bunnell has it and throws. And Lombard is out on one pitch. That's two down on three pitches in the fifth. And R. Lee Steiner of Pottstown, you'll get four reserve seat tickets to a future Phillies game. That'll bring up the top of the order, Bake McBride. Bake is two for two, a single and a double, and has scored the Phillies' lone run tonight. 1-1 ball game in the fifth inning. Bake will be batting for James Strauss of Liberty Avenue in Norristown, Pennsylvania. The Phillies run coming in the third inning when McBride doubled and came around to score on Larry Boa's base hit. Braves got their run without benefit of a hit. An error, a sacrifice fielder's choice, a fly ball, and a ground ball. Bake stands in with two outs and no base runners, batting for James Strauss of Norristown, Pennsylvania. Wind up by Ruthen. Here's the pitch to McBride. Fastball is high and tight for a ball. One and nothing to Bake McBride. Here's the 1 0 pitch to Bake, and it's a breaking ball high again. Ball 2, 2 0. Philly's got their run with two outs and no base runners when McBride got his double and Boa base hit. Here's the 2 0 pitch to Bake, McBride. It's low for a ball, and Ruthven falls behind him 3 0. Lined up by Ruthven. Here's the 3 0 pitch to McBride. Low ball four. Walked him on four pitches. McBride is a base runner for the third straight time. First walk given up by Ruthven. James Strauss of Norristown. You'll get four reserve seat tickets to a future Phillies game. That'll bring on Larry Boa. Larry will be batting for George Gardner of Ken- Kensington Avenue in Philadelphia. Boa has flied out to deep right field, single to drive in a run. The Braves play him as a pull hitter. Braves play him more unusually than any team in the National League. Here's the pitch on the way to Bowen. It's low for a ball. Hasselstein is shading him a bit to right center. Matthews plays him fairly deep in right. Of course, all the other clubs play him as a left-hand hitter well around to the opposite field and shallow. Ruthen throws the first base, a close play, but Bake McBride gets back. You'd be surprised to see Bake McBride go, too, while Larry Boa's batting. He and Boa and Maddox have decided they're going to do a little more running. There he goes, and the pitch is butted foul down the third base side. Bake was off and running, but Boa tried to butt his way on, and Bake will come back to first base. He had a good jump. One ball and one strike to count to Boa. That's one of those situations there where McBride was obviously running on his own. Two outs, and... Larry did not realize he was going and just tried to put a bunt down the line, try and get a couple men on for Mike Schmidt. And I don't know whether he would have stolen the base, but he had a heck of a jump and would have had a good chance to steal it. Ball on the strike to count to Boa. Finnell moves in a step or two at third base. 1-1 ball game, fifth inning. Ruthven steps off the rubber and looks at Bake McBride, the runner at first base. Boa batting for George Gardner, Kensington Avenue in Philadelphia in our Daily News home run payoff inning. Here's the pitch to Boa. Swing, a line drive. It is just foul down the right field line. Well hit ball by Boa, but foul by about a foot. So Bake will come back to first base to count a ball and two strikes to Larry Boa. Dick Ruthven keeps coming in to Boa. He's, he's pitching him inconsistently tonight, and Larry hit the long fly ball to right, and he got jammed and got his base hit last time, and that pitch was in again. He's throwing him a lot of fastballs in on the hands, and he's really handling that pitch well. And 
that's obviously the reason why they're playing him around like that because they've decided to pitch him in and not let him hit that pitch away to the opposite field. Now the stretch by Ruthen. Throw to first base and Bake McBride is back. Ruthen stretches. McBride going. One, two, pitch is high. The throw is also high and Bake is safe at second base with a stolen base. His second stolen base of the night is ninth of the year. He's only been caught once. I think that might have been a pitch out. Yeah, it might have been, except, I don't know. He, he def the ball was definitely up, and it was a good pitch for Pocaroba to handle, and he'd made a poor throw to second, but they got a tremendous jump again. He, he really is playing well right now and just running as well as he's ever run. McBride at second base with two outs. Two and two to count to Boa. Pitch to him is very high, and it's three and two. Full count to Larry Boa. Now, all of a sudden, Ruthven started to go away from him a little bit. I guess he figures he's handling the ball in on him so well that he has to change his pitching pattern on Boa a little bit. Ball count to Boa, Bake McBride, second base, and two outs. 3-2 pitch, swing, and a pop-up down the third base side. Barry Bunnell in foul territory, puts it away, and the Phillies go down in the fifth inning. George Gardner of Philadelphia will get four reserve seat tickets to a future Phillies game. Join us again tomorrow afternoon when in a designated inning you could win up to $5,000 in Daily News home run payoff. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left. We go to the bottom half of the fifth. It's Phillies one, Braves one. <laughs> The cat is really on the prowl at your Lincoln Mercury dealers. He wants these dealers to sell every Mercury in stock. Every one. That includes the anniversary edition four-door Mercury marquee with its traditional full-size luxury and comfort, plus a special value package featuring a vinyl roof, luxury wheel covers, body side moldings, flight bench seat, and more. Right now, this special package is being offered by Lincoln Mercury to its dealers at a factory discount. So check out your local Lincoln Mercury dealer now at the sign of the cat. Down, 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 down. If it's running good, there's a motor in the place where the motor goes. And in the motor, there's four, six, or eight little holes where something that's called a spark plug goes. And that's what makes the motor run good under the hood. If the plugs you use are champions. Because champions do what you want to do. When you turn on the key, they're waiting on you. So if you've got four, six, or eight little holes where the spark plug goes, can't buy a better plug than champions. We got a plug for any kind of car. You can't buy a better plug no matter where you are. So if you've got four, six, or eight little holes where the spark plug goes, Cheney leads off for the Braves, bottom of the fifth. He was safe on an air and scored Atlanta's run his first time up. He takes the pitch high for a ball. Lombard's 1-0 pitch. High again, ball two. It's 2-0 two to Darrell Cheney. 1-1 one, one ball game, bottom half of the fifth inning. Pitch to Cheney is fouled straight back. Stephen Borden from... Gloucester, New Jersey is here at the ballpark tonight cheering for the Bills. As are Mr. and Mrs. Jack Houston. Formerly from Philadelphia, now living in Jacksonville. Pitch on the way is high and it's three and one. Mr. and Mrs. Bill Houston listening in Wildwood tonight. Three and one to count to Daryl Cheney leading off for the Braves. Bottom half of the fifth inning. Here's Lonnie's 3-1 pitch, and it's high ball four. He walked in. Second walk given up by Lomborg. That'll bring up pitcher Dick Ruthven. Ruthven's sacrifice his last time up was safe at first on a fielder's choice. Well, I'm sure the Braves will be bunting again right now. Ruthven handles the bat very well. 1-1 one, one game, fifth inning. It uh, seems like a situation where you would want to bunt with your pitcher. Here's a stretch by Lomborg. Ruth and around the body bunts it foul down the first base side. One strike to count to Dick Ruthven. Also a good hitter, Dick Ruthven, and he's one of those tight pitchers that a manager might take the bun off and let him swing away and try and get it through one of the holes that open up. He, like I said, he really handles the bat well. 
Brisbane looks down at Tom Burgess, the third base coach. See if the bunt is still on. Ray's got their run without benefit of a hit on an air that sacrifice in the fielder's choice. Fly ball and a ground out. One strike pitch. He bunts it again. Again, he bunts it foul down the first base side. It's nothing and two. Going to the count to Dick Ruthven. Cheney at first base. Nobody out. Bottom of the fifth. Lombard gets ready. Has his sign from Boone. Here's the stretch. Two strike pitch. He bunts it again. It's a fair ball. Lombard has the one play to first base. Gets him at first base. Sacrifice good by Ruthven. Play goes Lomborg to Hebner for out number one and moves Cheney up to second base. And will bring up the top of the order, Jerry Royster. Royster has popped up and lined out to center field. Dodgers defeated San Francisco 3-1 today. Bert Uden got the win. By the blue took the loss. Montreal is really pounding on Pittsburgh. They lead it 9-1 at the end of five innings. Rudy May, the recipient of all those runs. Jim Rooker started for the Buccos. He didn't get past the third inning. There's a pitch on the way to Royster, and it's high for a ball. Larry Perry should an Expo's home run his fourth of the year. He had the two at St. Louis. Nothing, nothing. The Cubs and the Cardinals, Dennis Lamp and Bob Porsche. Now the stretch by Lomborg. The 1-0 pitch to Royster is low for a ball. It's 2 and nothing. American League Finals this afternoon. Toronto defeated New York 4-1. Jim Clancy, the winner, Ed Figueroa, took the loss. They had 55,000-plus at Yankee Stadium for that one. Largest crowd in the major leagues this year. Cleveland defeated Baltimore 6-2 behind David Clyde, winning his third without a loss. Mike Flanagan took the loss, and John Grubb hit a home run for Cleveland. Big swing and a miss by Royster to Slider. 2-1 the count to Jerry Royster. Boston won nothing over Detroit. Luis Dion pitching the shutout. Morris was the loser. The only run coming in at Jim Rice home run is 17th of the year. Kansas City and Minnesota were postponed because of rain. Seattle and Texas. No score in the first inning of Texas. Tom House against John Madlack. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Swing and a line drive to left field. Luzinski makes the running catch. No chance for a return to second base. Hustling back to second, Daryl Cheney. Reister hit it on the line, but at Luzinski, two down. Cheney at second base, and that'll bring up Brian Asselstein. Asselstein has struck out and grounded out. Terry Royster has really hit into some tough luck tonight. The last time he was up with a couple men on, he hit a shot that Gary Maddox made a heck of a play on in center field, and that ball to left. Uh, Luzinski had to come on hard to make that, so he's really had a tough night. Cheney, second base, two outs. Bottom of the fifth, we're tied at one. Lomborg's pitch to Athelstein. He golfs the foul behind the Phillies' dugout down the third base side. One strike to count to Brian Athelstein. Here's a stretch by Lomborg. One strike pitch. A little bit low for a ball. It's one and one. Rays are very high on this 24-year-old left-hand hitter, Brian Asselstein. Feel like he is going to be their center fielder for a good number of years. One-one pitch to him is a curveball that's over for a strike call. Ball and two strikes to Asselstein. Here's Lomborg's stretch. One-two pitch, swing, and a ground ball on the right side. Gobbled up by Davey Johnson. He throws, and Asselstein is out. Braves go down on the fifth. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left. After five, the score remains. Phillies won Atlanta one, and now it's time for a tasty break. Big baseball battler. Major leaguers come from every part of this great country of ours. Many come from places like Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. But only one came all the way from Czechoslovakia to the big leagues. 
Can you name him? While you toss that around, head for the kitchen and grab the cake that started right here in Philadelphia. It's Tasty Cake, of course. Like Tasty Cake chocolate, peanut butter, and mint candy cakes. Three delicious ways to discover the scrumptious, fresh-baked taste people have been cheering for over 60 years. And when you bring home candy cakes in family packs, there's always plenty of that great-tasting cake to go around. And now here's the answer to our baffler. The player that came to the Philadelphia A's all the way from Czechoslovakia was Elmer Vallo, one of baseball's great pinch hitters, who will long be remembered for his spectacular feats in County Mac Stadium. Baseball and Tasty Cake, they're all the good things wrapped up in one. In the KYW Newsroom, this is Fred Hunsberger. In the news this hour, there's word that Resorts International Casino has received the biggest slot machine take ever by any casino. The two major candidates for Pennsylvania governor will hold a series of TV debates this fall. About 15,000 people demonstrated across the street from the United Nations today, all favoring disarmament by all the nations of the world. 64 degrees, cloudy skies on Independence Mall. It's 8.58. Now back to the Atlanta Phillies game. Mike Schmidt will lead off for the Phillies here in the sixth inning, a 1-1 ball game. Schmidt is grounded out and flied out to right field. Chicago Cubs got two runs in the third. They now lead St. Louis 2-0 at the end of three. Those Cubs have been playing fine baseball. Griffin ready to go to Mike Schmidt. Here is the windup and the first pitch to Schmidt. A fastball is low for a ball. 1-0 the count to Schmidt. Here's the windup by Ruthen, the 1-0 pitch. Fastball popped up, way up in the air in foul territory behind the Braves' dugout. Pokoroba can't quite get there. Two rows back. Ball and a strike to Schmidt. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Phillies Baseball Network. This is KYW Philadelphia. It's 64 degrees, cloudy at Independence Mall. Mostly cloudy tonight and tomorrow morning. It is 9 o'clock. One and one to Mike Schmidt leading off the Philly six. Here's Ruthven's one one pitch. Fastball is high, it's two and one. Sign flash by Biff Pokarova. Here's the two under Schmidt. High again, ball three. Falls behind him three and one. Ruthven has walked one, he has struck out four. Wind up by Ruth in the 3-1 pitch. Swing and a high pop foul coming back and out of play behind the screen. So it's a full count to Mike Schmidt. Good grab by a fan behind the screen. Phillies 1 and the Braves 1 were in the sixth inning. Here's the 3-2 pitch to Schmidt, a fastball, low ball four. He walked him, Mike, the base runner. Second walk given up by Dick Ruthen. That'll bring on Greg Luzinski. The ball has struck out and grounded out second to first. That's about as low as you can recall Luzinski's batting average being at this stage of the campaign in late May. Came into the game hitting 246. He's had a tough trip. Pitch on the way to the ball is a breaking ball in the dirt and a good block by Biff Pokoroba. One and nothing to count to Greg Luzinski. Here's a stretch by Ruthven. And the pitch to Luzinski. Swing and a foul ball back out of play. Good grab by a fan in the upper deck. One ball and one strike to count to Luzinski. Schmidt at first base. Nobody out. Sixth inning. Here's a stretch by Ruthven. 1-1 one, one pitch, a breaking ball, is top foul, back and out of play. And Ruthven in front of the ball, one ball and two strikes. Now 
Griffin is ready. Here's the throw to first base. Just a lob toss. Not his good move. Schmidt back in plenty of time. One-two pitch. A sidearm breaking ball. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Dropped down to the side and gave him a sidearm slider. Struck out Luzinski for the second time. That's five strikeouts for Ruthven. One down in the sixth. That'll bring on Rich Hebner. Hebner has been up twice, and twice he has struck out. Big problem for the Phillies on this road swing, where the Phillies have won two and dropped eight, has been the production out of the meat of the order. The three, four, and five men, Schmidt, Luzinski, and Hebner, simply have not been able to hit during this entire trip. Throw to first base, and Schmidt gets back in time. Here's a stretch by Ruthven. And the pitch to Hebner. Swing and a fly ball center field. Asselstein is right there, makes the catch. So Hebner is out, two down. Schmidt holds at first base, and that'll bring on Gary Maddox. Maddox is one out of two. He is struck out in singles. With two outs, Mike Schmidt might possibly try to steal a base. Schmidt has stolen four bases this year. He's been caught three times. Maddox has been a good hitter on this trip. He's had 10 hits in his last 23 at bats. A quick throw to first base, and Mike Schmidt gets back. 1-1 one, one ball game, sixth inning, two outs, Schmidt at first base. Here's a pitch to Gary Maddox. Swing and a fly ball into deep center field. Asselstein away back. It is out of here. Home run to straightaway center field off the bat of Gary Maddox. Mike Schmidt scores in front of him, and the Phillies lead it by a count of 3-1. to one. So Maddox gets his second home run of the year. Both have come on this road trip. Gives the Phillies a big boost, and the Phillies now lead it 3-1. And Bo and Maddox, really, and, and Bake McBride lately have been the only players that have hit it all on this road trip. And Gary Maddox really hit that ball well to center field. It was a pitch that was down, and he really went down and got it and drove it. Here's Bob Boone, and the pitch to him is fouled straight back. Maddox is homer for a case of tasty cake for him and wife Sandra, sons Gary Lee and Derek, and also one for the St. Edmunds home for crippled children. So the Phillies have taken a 3 1 lead in the sixth on Gary Maddox home run. Next pitch to Boone is low for a ball, and the count is one and one. Ball on the strike, the count to Bob Boone. Two outs, no base runners. Phillies lead it three to one, sixth inning. Pitch to Boone, he is a fastball low, and it's two and one. Here's Ruthven's 2-1 pitch. Swing and a drive to deep right center field. This will stay in the park, though. Asselstein there makes the catch. But the Phillies move in front on Maddox. Two-run homer. Two runs in the inning, one hit. No errors, none left. We go to the bottom half of the sixth inning with a score. Phil's three, the Braves one. When you serve Lancaster brand meats, you'll find there's more to like than just the price. Like Lancaster brand boneless bottom round roast. Its consistent quality assures you it will be tender, juicy, and flavorful slice after slice. And that's true whether you choose a Lancaster brand boneless bottom round roast or any of our other fine cuts of meat. Remember, Lancaster brand is sold only at Acme Super Saver Markets. At Acme Super Saver, serving you is our policy and my pleasure. I'm a Ph.D. in economics, right? I run around to three stores to buy food, so I save a dollar here, a dollar there, and yet I let $200 sit in my checking account where it doesn't earn a cent. No more. Now I use the George machine at Gerard Bank to move money from my savings to my checking account only when I need it. With George, I push the buttons and I'm the brains behind the bank. <laughs> That's got to make me the smartest banker in town. George lets you be the banker. Gerard Bank, we're there when you need us. 
You know, impurities in your car's gasoline can cause bucking, missing, and even stalling. Well, now you can effectively clean your car's fuel with the Lee Inline Gasoline Filter. It removes impurities before they reach the engine or carburetor, and it's on sale now at Penn Jersey Auto Stores for just 99 cents. The Lee Inline Gasoline Filter, just 99 cents at Penn Jersey. Another reason why they say... When your car's not running like it did before, make a pit stop at Penn Jersey Auto Stores. Well, the Phillies come back home on Monday night against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Hope to see you there, the Phils and the Buccos. That game time will be 8.35. It plan to be there early. At 7.30, a performance by the U.S. Marines President's Drum and Bugle Corps. It'll also be Glassboro night. The Glassboro High School Band will be on hand. And after the game, an exciting new and different fireworks display. All that on Monday night when the Phils come back to Veterans Stadium. Gary Matthews leading off for the Atlanta Braves here in the sixth. He has walked and flied out to right. Lomborg's pitch to him. Big swing and a miss. One strike to count to Gary Matthews. Next pitch on the way is high for a ball. It's one and one. Lombard's 1-1 one, one pitch in the dirt. It gets by Bob Boone. 2-1 the count to Matthews. Phillies lead this game. 3-1. We're playing in the bottom of the sixth. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Low for a ball. He falls behind Matthews. 3-1. Lombard's 3-1 pitch to Matthews. Bouncing ball to Mike Schmidt at third. He has it and throws out at first base is Gary Matthews. That's one down in the sixth inning. That'll bring on Jeff Burrows. Burrows was called out on strikes his first time up. Lined a double to left in his second at bat. Danny said before the game tonight, since Lonnie hadn't pitched for a couple weeks, that he thought that uh, he would really watch him closely after six innings. If he could get five or six good innings out of him, that might be it. Pitch on the way to Burroughs is high for a ball. Well, he's had five very good innings so far out of Jim Lomborg, who's given up one unearned run, only two hits. Pitch on the way to Burroughs is low, and it's ball two, two and nothing. A lot of it, of course, would have to do on how many pitches he's thrown. He hasn't really labored tonight. He's been ahead of most of the hitters, so he might let him go a little longer if he's pitching well. Here's the 2-0 pitch, and it's high ball three, three and nothing to count to Jeff Burroughs. One out, nobody on base. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Phillies leading three to one. There's a 3-0 pitch. Inside ball four. Walked him on four pitches. That'll be the third walk given up by Lomborg. Burrows a base runner with one out. It brings on Biff Pokeroba. He is flied out to left in singles. He's got some bullpen activity. Warren Brewster starting to throw. Here's a stretch by Lomborg, and the pitch to Pokeroba is a fastball that's over for a strike call. Right-hander Tommy Boggs is throwing in the Atlanta Braves bullpen. Here's a pitch on the way, swing and a pop foul, coming back behind the screen and out of play. Coming in two the count to Biff Pokeroba. Burroughs first base, one out. Bottom of the sixth. Phillies lead this game three to one. The two-strike pitch. Swing and a broken bat looper to right field, base hit. Burroughs will stop at second base with a pesky Biff Pokeroba at first. With a looping single to right, his second hit of the night. Only the third hit surrendered by Jim Lombard. Two men on base, one out. That'll bring on Dale Murphy, the first baseman. Murphy is struck out and grounded into a fielder's choice.
Jeff Burrow's second base. Stiff poker over at first base and one down. The pitch to Murphy. He chased the low and away slider. One strike to count to Dale Murphy. Now the stretch by Lombard. One strike pitch to him, bounce foul down the third base side. Lomborg in front of Murphy, nothing in two. Bob Boone trots out to talk to Jim Lomborg. Big guy Dale Murphy, so far what we've seen of him, he really looks like he's a dead pull hitter. And the Phillies are throwing him a lot of breaking balls. Lomborg's throwing him sliders away. And what you hope to do is the guy will try and pull that pitch and he'll wind up hitting a weak ground ball to the left side of your infield. Nothing him to the count to Dale Murphy. Burrows at second base, he walked. Pokerov at first base, he singled. The two-strike pitch. Sidearm slider missing low and outside. It's one and two. Lomborg ready. Here's the stretch. One two pitch. Bouncing up there for a ball. It's two and two. Rick Camp is up and throwing now. The Atlanta Braves bullpen. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Low ball three, a full count to Dale Murphy. So after getting in front of Murphy, nothing in two, Lomborg tried to get the big guy to chase a bad pitch. He did not, and it's a full count. Here's Lombard stretch. 3-2 pitch. Swing and a bounding foul down the third base side to Tom Burgess, third base coach. Stays 3-2 to Murphy. Adrian Devine has joined Rick Camp in the Braves bullpen. Warren Brewster throwing in the Phillies bullpen. Bottom of the six fills lead 3-1. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Low ball four. He walked him and that'll load the bases. The fourth walk given up by Lombard. Two of them in this inning and the Braves have him jammed with one out. That'll bring on Barry Bunnell. He was grounded out and grounded into a double play. So Lombard in some sixth inning trouble here. A walk, a broken bat base hit and another walk. Pitching coach Ray Ripplemeyer is coming out. Should indicate that Lomborg is going to stay in the ball game. Usually when Danny Ozark comes out, the pitching change is made. Rip having a talk with Jim Lomborg. The Braves have the bases loaded one out. Bottom half of the sixth inning till he's lead three to one. Well, it looks like Danny's going to let him go to at least one more hitter. Brewster has definitely had enough time to be ready if they wanted to bring him in. And a lot of times what will happen is he'll stall a little bit like this. But the, the Phillies really aren't stalling right now because Brewster's thrown enough. In fact, he's kind of just pawing the mound out there right now. And he's ready if they wanted him. Lomborg will pitch to Barry, but L base is loaded one out. Burroughs at third. Pokerov at second. Murphy at first. The pitch to Bunnell. Very high and inside ball one. One and nothing to count to Barry Bunnell. Lomborg has his sign. Here's the stretch. The 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss at a sharp breaking slider. One ball and one strike to count to Bunnell. He has a sign from Bob Boone. 1-1 one, one pitch. High and inside. Ball two. Two and one to count to Bunnell. 
Bases loaded with Braves, one out. Phillies lead, 3-1. We're in the bottom of the sixth. The 2-1 pitch. Swing ground ball to third. Schmidt short out, throws the second one. Relay, a wide relay. Two runs are going to score. This game is tied up 3-3. Three to three. Schmidt juggled momentarily. Threw to Davey Johnson. Johnson hurried his relay through, and he threw it away. Two runs score, and this game is now a 3-3 three three ball game. And Bunnell at second base. Safe at first on a fielder's choice. Goes to second on the throwing air on Davey Johnson. Give Bunnell a run batted in, enabling Burroughs to score. Pokeroba scores on the air on Johnson. Force to second base is Murphy. Two outs. Bunnell at second base, and that'll bring on Darrell Cheney. Score tied at three, sixth inning. Pitch on the way to Cheney is high for a ball. Cheney has been safe on an air in his walk. Here's the pitch to Cheney, and it's over for a strike call. It's one and one. Phillies during this entire road trip just have not played well defensively at all, and that is supposed to be one of the fortes of the club. Phillies have committed two more errors tonight. Pitch on the way to Cheney is outside. It's two and one. The errors on this trip have been very costly. Here's the stretch by Lombard. The two one pitch. Wide ball three. It's three and one. Now the stretch by Lombard, 3-1 pitch, swing and a ground ball foul down the first base side. A full count to Cheney. Rays have tied it here in the sixth inning, and only one hit. Rays got their first run in the third inning without a hit, and have scored two runs here in the sixth inning on one hit, a broken bat single. There's a stretch by Lombard. 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Cheney goes down swinging. That'll be the fourth strikeout for Lombard. But the Braves tie the game with two runs. One of them unearned. One hit. One costly error and one man left. At the end of six, Phillies three, Atlanta three, and now it's time for a tasty break. Fubu Phillies fans already know there never was a better baseball team than those fantastic Phillies. Just like True Blue Pie fans know there never was a better tasting package pie than Tasty Cake Pies. Try an apple, a cherry, a peach, or blueberry, and discover the tantalizing taste of Tasty Cake Pies. They're all the good things wrapped up in one. Tasty Cake is a world of fun. All the when you paint this year, select the paint that lasts longer. MAB Seashore House Paint. It gives you more years per gallon. In fact, it's the best paint you can buy. That's because MAB Seashore House Paint was especially designed for the harsh, rugged weather conditions on the shore. Like wind, rain, sun, and especially salt air. So when it comes to painting your home, inside or out, think of MAB in the more than 300 MAB paint stores, dealers, and Rich Lux Home Centers. Bank AmeriCard and Master Charge accepted. We move to the seventh inning of brand new ball game again, tied at three. Phillies three runs, five hits. The Braves three runs and three hits. Two of the Braves runs unearned as the Phillies continue to make bad plays in the field. That's kind of been the story of this entire road trip. Leading off for the Phillies will be Davey Johnson. Johnson is grounded out and popped up. Here's a pitch to Davey and a tie for a ball, one and nothing. Tim McCarver has moved into the on-deck circle to pinch hit for Jim Lombard. Next pitch to Johnson. High, towering fly to left field, but it's going to stay in the park. Burrows there at the warning track, 
makes the catch, and Davy is out one down. We'll bring on Jim McCarver to bat for Jim Lombard with one out in the seventh inning. Philly so far on this road trip, playing their 11th game, have made 12 errors. And the thing is, they have been costly errors in just about every case. Very un -Philly like Phillies are respected around the league as one of the finest fielding teams in the game. McCarver hitting 371 as a pinch hitter. Timmy is one out of five. Have to be happy with Jim Lonborg's performance. He he gave the Phillies six strong innings. He gave up three runs, but you know they were really cheap runs and only three hits and showed no signs of his back problem. So that's encouraging. Here's a pitch on the way to McCarver. A change is over for a strike call. One strike to Tim McCarver with one out. Three three ball game seventh inning. Pitch to Timmy, a fastball high for a ball, and it's one and one. <laughs> Follow the strike to count to Tim McCarver. Pitch to him is low for a ball. It's two and one. Two balls and a strike to McCarver, batting for Jim Lombard. Hot night tonight, Chris. I decided not to smoke my cigar in deference to you. Thank you. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Change is over for a strike called. It's 2 and 2. You didn't have to get so angry and break it in the head. <laughs> what was wrong with it? <laughs> Nothing was wrong with it. <laughs> it's a matter of opinion. Must have been a throwback to the last inning. The pitch to McCarver is swinging a miss. He struck him out. Good fastball by Ruthman, who's recorded six strikeouts. Two down of the seventh. That'll bring on Bake McBride. Bake has been a bat three times. He's been on base all three times. A single, a double, and a walk. Stolen two bases. Two outs, nobody on base. Seventh inning. 3-3 three, three ball game. Final game of this road trip. Thank heavens will be tomorrow. Larry Christensen against Preston Hanna. Three runs. Here's a pitch on the way to bake a fastball is low for a ball. Buckos are having a tough time at Riverfront tonight. Or rather at Three Rivers tonight. Montreal leading Pittsburgh 10-1. to Here's a pitch on the way to McBride. A late swing and a miss. Ball and a strike to count to bake McBride with two outs and no base runners. There's a 1-1 pitch to McBride. It's a slider on the inside corner for a strike call. So Ruthven is in front of McBride, a ball and two strikes. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Fastball laced into right field. Matthews makes catch it is Juta. Screaming line drive grabbed by Gary Matthews it is Juta. Phillies down in order in the seventh. No runs hit their errors and none left. We move to the bottom of the seventh to score. Phils three, Braves three. Two years ago, Plymouth introduced the most successful car in its history, Polaris. Today we've got it in three styles that all give you your money's worth. The Slant 6 Coupe that gets better mileage than any six-cylinder automatic built in America. The sedan that's roomiest in its class. And the wagon that's become the number one selling wagon in America over the past two years. Coupe, sedan, or wagon. Polari gives you your money's worth. See it today at your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Well, we move to the bottom half of the seventh inning. The Phillies' new pitcher, Tug McGraw, for more play-by-play -play. here in the seventh. There's Andy Musters. Thank you, Harry. Tug is pitching for the first time since last weekend when he had a decision in every game in the Phillies series at New York. Tug coming in with a two-win, three-loss record, an earned run average, which is right on the mark at three. Tug tonight appearing in his 15th ball game. He has worked 18 innings. Ruthven is the scheduled batter for the Braves, but it looks like they're going to a pinch hitter. 
And Tito Gaston will come out and bat for Ruthven. here for station identification, the Phillies Baseball Network. This is KYW Philadelphia, 61 degrees, cloudy at Independence Mall, mostly cloudy tonight and tomorrow morning. It's 9.30. Here's Cito Gaston at the plate, swings at the first pitch and a one-hopper right back to the mound. McGraw grabs it and throws him out. Gaston retired on one pitch, and that's the first out of the seventh inning. So Tug McGraw came in and got the veteran right-handed pinch hitter, Cito Gaston. That'll bring up Jerry Royster, who is 0 for 3 tonight. He has popped out and twice lined out. This ball game all even, three runs aside. The starters both out of there now. Lonborg giving away to Tug McGraw. And the Braves will be needing a new pitcher when the Phillies bat in the eighth inning. Conference at the mound between Bob Boone and Tug McGraw. The Braves' ace reliever, Adrian Devine, is up and throwing in their bullpen. Jerry Royster, right-handed batter. The wind-up in the pitch by McGraw. A curveball is low ball one. Well, Tug had quite a weekend last weekend in New York. He was the loser on Friday night, the winner on Saturday, and the loser again Sunday. Swing and a foul straight back. One ball, one strike on Royster, hitting a 263. Twice the Phillies have had leads in this ball game, and twice the Braves have come back to tie. They have never led. Two of the three Braves' runs are unearned. McGraw's pitch is high, a ball. Two balls and a strike, the count on Jerry Royster. Brian Asselstein is on deck. Here's the 2-1 pitch by Tug, and it's laced into right field, but Nick McBride playing it almost perfectly catches it for the out. That's the third time tonight that Royster has lined out. He has lined out once to each of the outfielders. And along with his pop-up, he's 0-4. Two down in the inning, the batter, Brian Asselstein. Asselstein has knocked in one of the Atlanta runs. He did it on a ground ball. He's 0-3. He is a left-handed batter. Base is empty, two outs in the inning. Here's McGraw's pitch, it's high, ball one. When the Phillies return to the vet on Monday night, Jim Cott will pitch for the Phillies against a hard-throwing rookie right-hander, Don Robinson, for Pittsburgh. The one-nothing pitch, a little flare beyond shortstop, and it falls for a hit. It was right over Schmidt's head, Boa couldn't get back in time, and a little flare hit just beyond the infield on the left side. That is unbelievable. Well, there was some indecision between Schmidt and Boa. Boa obviously thought Schmidt was going to catch it, and Schmidt gave up on it because he thought Boa was going to catch it, and it dropped, and, you know, the way it's been going. That is only the fourth hit of the ball game for the Braves. Just a little flare right over Schmidt's head that fell barely on the edge of the outfield grass. So the Braves get a runner with two down, and the power of their lineup is coming up. Here's Gary Matthews, 0 for 2 with a walk. Matthew is batting over 400 in this ballpark this year. The pitch to the right-handed batter is the screwball outside ball one. Phillies three, Braves three. We're in the seventh inning. Doug stretches. Here's his pitch to Matthew as a fastball. It's in for a called strike. Neither one of these teams has been scoring many runs lately. Not at all surprising to see them tied 3-3 in the seventh inning. Here's McGraw's 1-1 pitch, and it's a curveball high, 2-1. Harry Matthews made a pretty good play last inning, catching that low liner by Bake McBride. Here's the 2-1 pitch to him. He swings and taps at the third base. Schmidt over to second for the force out, and the inning is over. For the Braves in the seventh, no runs. One hit and one man left. At the end of seven, it's tied. Phillies three, Braves three. I used to think of the George machine at Girard Bank as my own private money game. If I forgot to go to the bank or needed cash on a weekend, there he was, proceed to go and collect $200. Man, I owned that withdrawal button. You know what I mean? And then I looked at all the buttons. Wow. 
checking, savings, deposits, loans, transfers, balances. I got a whole bank right here. Now I do my everyday banking with George. I push the buttons, and I run the bank. George lets you be the banker. Gerard Bank, we're there when you need us. Here's a great oil bargain from Penn Jersey Auto Stores. Castrol's best GTX in 10W40 and 20W50. Now just 69 cents a quart, limit six. You'll save 30 cents a quart during this limited sale, so you'd better pick up some right away. Castrol GTX motor oil, only 69 cents a quart at Penn Jersey Auto Stores. Which is why they say... When your car's not running like it did before, make a pit stop at Penn Jersey Auto Stores. Back here in Atlanta, the new pitcher for the Braves is going to be Adrian Devine. Remember, a big 12-game homestand coming up for the Phillies beginning day after tomorrow. 12 games beginning with the Pirates, the Dodgers, the Giants, and these Braves. And when the Braves come in on Friday, June 9th for teen night, all teens get a dollar off box and reserve seats and a great pregame show that night featuring the group the youngsters love, the Tramps. They'll be doing their hit rendition of Disco Inferno. Chris, you kept up with the changes while I was giving that uh, little plug on the homestand. What are they? Brian Athelstein went uh, from center to right. And Adrian Devine's the new pitcher. He's going to hit number three. Uh, Bonnell went from third base to center field. And Rod Gilbert came in the game to play third base, and he'll hit ninth. Here's Got Larry Boa at the plate. <laughs> and the pitch to Larry is high ball one. Well, Adrian Devine is their top relief pitcher, though his record... Uh, May not show it. He's got a 5.79 earned run average, and he's got two wins and two defeats appearing tonight in his 20th ball game. Swinging a ground ball by Boa off the glove of Murphy, picked up by the second baseman. No, he can't get it either, and Boa is safe. Larry Boa will get an infield hit on that ball. Larry Boa getting his second hit of the ball game. He's two for four, and the Phils have a runner on to start the eighth inning. Oh, uh, Gray still had a chance to make get ball on that play after Murphy messed it up and went right over to Royster. Royster then fumbled it, and uh, the Braves kicked the ball around a little bit that time like the Phillies have been doing. At the plate, Mike Schmidt. Mike Schmidt being called in for a conference with first base coach Tony Taylor. Schmidt is 0 for 2 tonight with a walk. Phillips with the go-ahead run on base. Nobody out. The only reason that Tony Taylor could be talking to Mike Schmidt is that Boa told him to tell him something like he might be going on the first pitch because uh, Billy DeMars would be giving the signs at third base. The right-hander winds and then quickly makes a throw over to first, not in time. Devine is 26 years of age, a Texan from Galveston. This is his third year in the big leagues. He had previously been with the Braves, went to Texas, and they got him back. Right-hander stretches. Pitch on the way to Schmidt. A shot to left field. Coming hard. And the ball is caught in left field by Jeff Burrows. And a throw now back into the infield. And what's the call here? There's no way. Well, we'll have to see a replay. And, and then I can't believe that, that he caught that ball. And then, well, we'll have to. Ozark's going to argue about it. And Bo is going to argue about it. And DeMars is going to argue about it. So. Bo was doubled off first base. Larry thought, sure, the ball had fallen in. We were watching the third base umpire, Jerry Crawford, who made the catch sign all the way. There's a big conference going out behind third base right now. And. Doug Harvey is going out there to step in front of Larry Boa and try to cool him down. There's no way that the Phillies will overrule the umpire here. That'll go as a double play. Chris has uh, left the microphone for a moment to try to catch the replay, if indeed it is shown, to see exactly what happened. But that was a sinking liner in left field. Jeff Burroughs made a tremendous play on it. Larry Boa thought there was no way that he could have caught the ball. And so Larry was easily doubled off first base. Well, Larry Boa has left the field. Danny Ozar continuing 
his complaints out there, and it's getting quite heated right now. Billy DeMars is talking with the home plate umpire, and Danny is nose-to-nose -nose with Jerry Crawford. They're into a real screaming match out there. Jerry, the young Philadelphia umpire, son of veteran umpire Shag Crawford. Ozark is out of the game. Danny Ozark has just been ejected from the ball game. But before he goes, he's getting the last shot at Crawford. And it looks like Jerry's giving it right back. Well, I just saw the replay and the ball bounce, I would say, almost a foot in front of the outfielder. Almost a foot. And I just can't believe you can miss a play that bad. I don't care who he is. You just can't miss a play that bad when you're looking right at it, you know. A double off first base, so instead of Phillies having a genuine threat here, there are two outs in the inning and nobody on base. And now Danny Ozark has been ejected from the ball game. Jerry Crawford really ought to be ashamed of himself for that. That's just unbelievable. I mean, that's the reason Ball was doubled off by so much because he was down at second base standing there because the ball had been trapped by Jeff Burroughs. I mean, it's just unbelievable. You know, the things that are happening on this trip, and when an umpire makes a terrible call like that, it doesn't help. just unreal. Well, Mike Schmidt had been standing at first base this entire time, but he is now going back to the dugout. That was a hard hit low liner by Schmidt that looked like it certainly was going to fall in. And according to Chris's observation of the TV replay, it did in fact fall in. I did not see that, but at any rate, that was a tremendous play by Burroughs in left field, and the Phillies are very upset about the fact that Boa got doubled off first. It didn't need a replay, really, but I just had to see it. To, you know, off the naked eye from here, it was obvious. Here's Greg Luzinski, swinging in a foul at the plate, strike one. The Bulls had another tough night. He is 0 for 3 and has struck out twice. Jerry Crawford's looking in the dugout, and he wants to run about five more people, and he might get a chance. One strike on Greg Luzinski. Wind up in the pitch by Devine, swinging and a miss and a breaking pitch. Nothing and two, the count on Luzinski. This game is tied. Phillies three, Braves three were in the top half of the eighth inning. And when things start to go bad, even the umpiring gets bad. Here's a curveball outside. One and two, the count to Luzinski. Braves got Devine back in the Willie Martinez deal. A fastball misses low. Two and two, the count. Dick Ruthman went the first seven innings for the Braves, giving up five hits and three runs. He walked two, struck out six. Gary Maddox hit a home run off him. Pitch to the ball is a broken bat ground ball to shortstop. Picked up by Cheney. The throw across is in time. And the inning is over. For the Phillies, no runs, one hit, nobody left on base. At the end of the half, Phillies three, Braves three. Plymouth Arrow gets great mileage, 39 on the highway, 29 in the city, and has a low sticker price, 3841, excluding taxes and destination charges, and features like reclining buckets, tinted glass, and fold-down rear seat. So when you get a Plymouth Arrow, you get your money's worth. The mileage is an EPA estimate for a manual transmission Arrow with 1.6 liter engine. Your mileage may differ. Plymouth Arrow's great mileage, price, and features give you your money's worth. See you today at your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Back here in Atlanta, and we go to the Braves half of the eighth inning, a tie ball game. Jeff Burrows, their cleanup hitter, will lead it off against Tug McGraw. Controversy abounds in this ballpark tonight. Danny Ozark has been ejected. And the Phillies really think they have been robbed in this one tonight. Burroughs, Pocaroba, and Murphy, the batters, in the eighth inning. Here's the windup by Tug in the pitch. It is over for a strike call. Burroughs has struck out, doubled, and walked. He has scored one of the Atlanta runs. Burroughs batting 348. Here's the pitch from the left-hander. Swing and a ground foul, trickling straight back. Nothing and two the count on right-handed batter Jeff Burroughs. The starters are gone. Lon Borg and Ruthman out of the ball game. It's Tug McGraw matched against Adrian Devine right now in tie 3 3. Here's a pitch that really sailed on Tug way up high. One and two. 
Well, Jeff Burroughs just got a little knockdown message right there, and all he did was try and trap the ball in the outfield. It wasn't his fault. <laughs> Here's the one-two pitch on the way, breaking ball high. They're going to knock somebody down. They're going to knock Jerry Crawford down. <laughs> pitch didn't sail that much. No, that was an 0-2 message. Well, you are lashing out in all directions. No, that was just what that was. Here's a 2-2 pitch changeup or a screwball is outside. Full count. McGraw goes full count to Burroughs, leading off the eighth inning for the Braves. All right, Tug has the sign from Boone. He winds, and here's the pitch. Swing and a foul ball. Two of the three Braves runs are unearned tonight. Been a tough night for Davey Johnson. He's committed a pair of errors, and Johnson is 0 for 3 at the plate. Doug Wines here again, the 3-2 pitch. It bounces, ball four. Jeff Burroughs walks for the second straight time. And the Braves have the go-ahead runner on. Braves are going to a pinch runner for Burroughs. Roland Office will go in and run for Burroughs. Roland Office. Up to the plate, Biff Pokoroba. Pokoroba has had singles his last two times up. Switch hitter now batting right-handed. The pitch to him is punted toward third. It's a beauty. Schmidt fields one play. First base in time. Hebner staying on the bag to receive that throw. The sacrifice successful. Office goes to second. A 5-3 sacrifice. That's the first out of the inning. And now Dale Murphy and Barry Bennell will have chances to drive in the go-ahead run. Murphy is 0 for 2 tonight with a walk. Roland Office, the runner at second base, and one out of the inning. Both bullpens quiet right now. Tug is out the belt. Here's the pitch to Murphy, swinging a ground ball headed for the hole, scooped up by Schmidt, holds the runner, throw across in time. A nice play by Schmidt. Mike went into the hole to field that ground ball, a grass hugger, and he skimmed it right off the ground, picked it up and threw him out. And at the same time, held office at second base. That's the second out. And to the plate, Barry Bunnell. Well, Bunnell has hit the ball Schmidt's way three times tonight. Once into a double play. Once getting aboard on a force out on the potential inning-ending double play in the sixth when the Braves got two runs. Swing and a miss at the curveball, strike one. Barry Bunnell started the game at third base, now playing in right field for the Braves. Make that center field. Pitch on the way to the plate is low, a ball. One ball, one strike to Barry Bunnell. Right-handed batter. Tug stretches. Here's the pitch. Screwball outside. Two and one. Last night, the Braves won four to two behind Phil Negro. His knuckleball was really working. The only dent was Jerry Martin's home run. Here's the pitch to Bunnell. Lace to left field. Luzinski coming hard. He grabs the ball and hangs it. No, it gets beyond him. It goes beyond him. And scoring on the play is office. All the way to second base. Bunnell and the Braves have taken the lead. Luzinski got leather on that ball, but he couldn't hang on. And the Braves have gone up four to three. Greg Luzinski will draw an error on that play. And there will be no RBI, but the Braves have to go ahead run. Third error of the ball game for the slump-ridden Phillies. I don't know how much you can add to that. The ball was a sinking line drive, and Kozinski came up and tried to make the catch, and he was there in time, and the ball went off the heel of his glove. Some game. Darrell Chaney is out the plate, right-handed batter. The pitch to him, swing and a miss, a strike. Well, you got to say tough night for Lazinski too, because his plate slump has continued. The ball is 0 for 4 tonight with a pair of punch-outs. And now this error to allow the go-ahead run to score for Atlanta. 
Pitch to Cheney, misses low. One ball and one strike. Well, how do you think the Pirates feel? Montreal 15, Bucks 1. And that is a final score. Your basic route. Cheney takes low ball, too, 2 and 1. Cheney got aboard on an error by Dave Johnson and scored earlier tonight an unearned run. He has also walked and struck out. It's now 4-3 Atlanta. Pitch to the plate, ripped into left field. Here's another one, but this one falls in front of Luzinski, being waved around as Barry Bunnell heading for the plate. He scores, and the Braves get another run. Darrell Cheney, a line drive single to left field, and the Braves lead it 5-3. the Braves get now will be unearned because the error by Luzinski would have been the third out of the inning. That's only the seventh run driven in by Cheney. He's at first with two down and Rod Gilbreth batting out of the number nine spot. He's the guy that killed the Phillies last year with a 349 batting mark against them. Right-handed batter the pitch to him. It's in for a strike call. Gilbert batting 216 this year. No home runs, eight runs batted in. He has some power. He had three homers against the Phillies last year and knocked in 11 runs. Tug stretches. Here's the pitch to Gilbert. Fly ball, right side. It's going foul out of play. Nothing in two, the count on Gilbert. Doug Reddy, here's the pitch to Gilbert that's way high, a ball. Well, the first hit the Braves had in this inning was the single by Cheney. They got the go-ahead run without benefit of the hit. High, ball two, two and two. Lead-off walk to Burroughs, sacrifice, ground ball, and then the error by Luzinski on the sinking liner hit by Bunnell to score the run. Swing and a pop-up. It's off the first base side and foul ground. It's out of play. Count remains two balls and two strikes on Rod Gilbert playing at third and batting out of the number nine spot. He was an eighth inning replacement. Phillies in danger of losing their fifth straight ball game and of dropping the un uh, under 500 for the year. Here is a base hit to center field and Gilbert picks it right up where he left off. Cheney stops at second. And Rod Gilbert sends the ball back through the middle for a base hit. And he hasn't forgotten that the Phillies are his favorite team. Right up where he left off. Cheney stops at second. And Rod Gilbert sends the ball back through the middle for a base hit. And he hasn't forgotten that the Phillies are his favorite team. Well, the Braves had three hits coming into the inning, and they have three in the inning. I beg your pardon, they have two hits in the inning. They had four hits coming into the inning, and they have two within the inning. Four and two. Back to the top of the Atlanta lineup, and here's Jerry Royster. Royster is 0 for 4. The last three times up, he has lined out. Doug stretches. Here's the pitch to Royster. Fly ball down the right field line, but it's going out of play. Strike one on Royster. Cubs two, Cardinals nothing. Their ball game in the sixth inning. The Expos have beaten the Pirates 15 to one. Houston two, the Mets one. Their game in the third. Swing and a miss by Royster. Nothing in two. The count on the Atlanta second baseman. Well, win or lose, this road trip concludes tomorrow afternoon. We'll be on the air at. 2.15 Philadelphia time. Christensen against Hanna. Here's the pitch to Royster. Ground ball. Boa backhand. Throws over to Johnson at second in time for the force out. And the inning is over. But the Braves have done some major damage in this inning. They have scored two runs. They were both on earned. They did it on two hits. There was one error. And there were two men left on base. At the end of eight, the Braves lead it five to three. Ignore this tone. In the next 30 seconds, Cutman Transmission will analyze your transmission while it is in operation. If it is faulty, we'll know about it. And you will be fully aware of the care Cutman takes in its work, as well as of their free towing service. We can see it now. It's coming into focus. The analysis of your transmission is here. It is. 
Thank you. Cotman Transmissions is offering you a good deal. They'll road test your car. They'll remove the pan, clean the sump and screen, adjust the bands and linkage, install a new pan gasket, and add new fluid. And that's a pretty good deal because it only costs eleven forty-five. That's eleven dollars and forty-five cents. Not a lot for a little peace of mind. Cotman fixes transmissions because they know how. For the leaders in preventing maintenance, check your local yellow pages for the Cotman man near you. There's a demanding cat around. He's at your Lincoln Mercury dealers, and he wants these dealers to sell every Mercury in stock. Every one. That means you have a great chance to get into any one of his fine cars right now. From the full-size Mercury marquee, right through his Cougars, Zephyrs, Monarchs, and Bobcats. They're all up for grabs right now. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer quick, because that cat means business. At the sign of the cat. Defensive changes for the Atlanta Braves. Roland Oppis, who entered the game as a pinch runner, will stay in and play in center field. And Barry Bunnell will move to left field. That's the third spot that Bunnell has been in tonight. He started at third, went to center, and now goes to left. Well, the Braves lead it by two. Four of the five Braves runs tonight are unearned. Here's Richie Hebner to start it against Adrian Devine. Line drive down the right field line. A base hit for Hebner. Over to cut it off is Hasselstein. And Hebner, who had been 0 for 3, starts the ninth inning with a base hit to right field. Let's pause here for station identification along the Phillies baseball network. This is KYW Philadelphia. It is 57 degrees, cloudy at Independence Mall. Mostly cloudy tonight and tomorrow morning. KYW News Times, 9.58. The Phillies bring the tying run to the plate in the person of Gary Maddox, who has two hits tonight and homered in his last at bat. Maddox, a very hot batter lately. He has nine hits in his last 15 times up. Gary batting out of a crouch, swing and a miss, a strike. Young Adrian Devine, an ex-brave who went to Texas and is back again pitching in relief for Atlanta. Stretch in the one-strike pitch. Foul back to the screen, strike two. Ebner at first with nobody out. Atlanta leads it five to three. The runs the Braves scored against Tug McGraw are, are unearned runs. And yet, as of the moment, Tug stands to be the loser in this ballgame. Phillies need a ninth inning rally. The Braves have Rick Camp up in the bullpen, but actually he's just standing down there watching the action right now. Pitch to Maddox is fouled back to the screen. Count stays at 0-2. On deck is Bob Boone. The Phillies have out-hit the Braves 7-6. But their defense has betrayed them tonight, but plenty. Three errors in the ball game, leading to four unearned Atlanta runs. Danny Ozark ejected in this game for one call made by third base umpire Jerry Crawford tonight. Divine stretches. Here's the pitch on the way to Maddox. Swing and he just gets a piece of it and trickles a foul. The Cardinals have scored, but the Cubs still lead 2-1 to one that game in the eighth inning at Bush Stadium. Here's Biff Pokoroba going out to have a word with Devine. Bruce Souter is in there pitching that game for the Chicago Cubs now. Buddy Schultz is in there pitching for St. Louis. Devine stretches the 0-2 pitch to Maddox. A ball off the handle of the bat, sinking in right field. It drops for a hit. Gary's on his way to second base. The ball is rolling around the bullpen. They're having trouble with it, and the Phil's runners get to second and third. Athelstein had all kind of trouble with that blue pitch to right field, and the Phil's have the tying runs at second and third with nobody out. That'll be the third hit of the ball game for Gary Maddox. Athelstein tripped over the uh, catcher's area out there with a warming up another pitcher out in the Atlanta bullpen, and for a moment it looked like the ball had uh, gotten past him, but, you know, with nobody out, there was no way you want to get a guy thrown out at the plate when you're two down in the ninth, so Billy DeMars made sure that Richie Hebner didn't move off a of third base and kept him right there. 
Bob Boone heading to the plate for the Phillies. First, another conference at the mound between Pocaroba and the pitcher Devine. The Phillies have Boone, Johnson, and possibly pinch hitter for McGraw. Gene Garber is warming up in the Phillies' bullpen. Bob Boone at the plate. He's 0 for 3. The pitch to Boone. A wild pitch. It gets by, but nobody's going to score. The Phillies playing exceptionally cautious here. I'm sure that Hebner could have come in on that one, but he did not. A wild pitch went all the way to the backstop, but the runners did not move. And now Bobby Cox on the way to the mound, and I believe he has already made the motion to the bullpen. He stepped out of the dugout and motioned to the bullpen, and we have a pitching change here in Atlanta. Rick Camp is coming into the game for the Braves. We've got a pitching change. We're in the ninth inning. Atlanta leads 5-3, to three, but the Phillies have the tying runs on base. We'll be back following these messages. Regardless of your age, if you ever thought of coming back to college, now's the time. And the place is Widener College in nearby suburban Chester, Pennsylvania. You can widen your world with Widener, with summer courses given in the day or evening. Graduate and undergraduate courses are scheduled. Degree programs, too. Day courses at Widener include business administration, engineering, social science, paralegal, humanities and science, just to name a few. In addition, evening courses include accounting and management, liberal arts, science, engineering, and social science. MBA courses are also offered in the evening. Students needing credit for September enrollment will be at Widener this summer. So will housewives whose education was interrupted. So will businessmen who want to improve their status and income. So will men and women of all ages who will take a course or two to add enrichment to their lives. If you want to widen your world with Widener, call 876-5551. Two years ago, Plymouth introduced the most successful car in its history, Polaris. Today, we've got it in three styles that all give you your money's worth. The Slant 6 Coupe that gets better mileage than any six-cylinder automatic built in America. The sedan that's roomiest in its class. And the wagon that's become the number one selling wagon in America over the past two years. Coupe, sedan, or wagon. Polari gives you your money's worth. See it today at your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. A Georgian, 24-year-old Rick Camp, right-hander, is in the lineup now for Atlanta as their new pitcher. Camp was their fireman of the year last year with 10 saves and 6 wins. This year, he is 0-1 with a 5.40 earned run average. He inherits a potentially, from their point of view, disastrous situation. The Phils have runners at 2nd and 3rd. He inherits a 1-0 count against Bob Boone, that one pitch. A wild pitch on which Hebner did not score. All right, Camp stretches. Pitch on the way to Boone. Big swing and a miss off a fastball. One ball and one strike. Camp has one lifetime win over the Phillies. They have not beaten him. I really don't understand why no one did score in that wild pitch, but, uh, you know, maybe like Andy said, maybe the Phillies were playing it. I don't know. Right-hander Camp at the belt. Here's the pitch to Boone. Ground ball to third base. Over his head. A base hit. A run will score. And being held at third base is Maddox. Phillies are within one run. It is five to four as Boone chopped the grounder over the head of Gilbert at third base, and the Bills have one of the runs. Now runners at the corners, and still nobody out. Three straight hits for the Phillies in the ninth inning. Buddy Harrelson into the game as a pinch runner at first base for Boone. Bobby gets an RBI, his 22nd of the year. Charged the run to Adrian Devine. Runners at first and third, still nobody out. Now at the plate, Davey Johnson. Been a tough night for Davey, but boy, could he ever atone for that tough night right here. Johnson has committed two errors, and at the plate, he's 0 for 3. Braves infield is halfway. There are no outs. This means that they are, in effect, uh, conceding the tying run. They have shortened up now. They have come in from the double play position, and they have shortened up. They are not conceding. Here's the pitch on the way, and it's fouled back by Johnson. They could actually pull a double play from this position if they got a grounder. That looked like a sure double play. They would also have the option of coming to the plate. Yeah, they're at home, of course, and, uh, you know, a tie, uh, they don't get beaten with a tie, and they'd have a double play and nobody on base, so that's probably what they're going to do. They're going to play halfway, and if the ball is hit real hard, you know, they'll go for the double play. If it's kind of in between, they might come to the plate. Uh, gives them a lot of options the way they have their infield set up. 
Camp makes a throw to first base, scampering back is the pinch runner, Harrelson. And the Phillies have uh, Barry Foote warming in the bullpen because they'll need a catcher now that Harrelson is running for Boone. Well, they hope they'll need a catcher. They have to tie the game first. Here's a hard hit ball off the glove of Cheney. It'll tie the ball game. Gary Maddox crosses the plate. Here goes Harrelson to third base. He is in there. That'll be a base hit for Davey Johnson off the glove of Cheney. He couldn't come up with it. And the Phillies have tied the ball game in the ninth inning. Well, that infield, uh, like we were just talking about before it happened, the infield up being up halfway caused that ball to be able to get through. If they'd have been playing back for the double play specifically, they would have had it. But they were playing up, and the shortstop Cheney had to try and dive and knock the ball down, and he almost did, but it still skittered out in the outfield, and now the Phillies are in real good shape. Jay Johnstone is coming out as a pinch hitter for Tug McGraw. Jay Johnstone, the pinch hitter. Jay has been the Phil's most frequently used pinch hitter this year, but he is 0 for 12 in that capacity. So here's Jay, left-handed batter at the plate, squaring off against the right-hander, Rick Camp. Pitch on the way to him. Hard hit ball to left field. Barry Bunnell coming on in, and he takes it for the out, and his throw on in will be in such a fashion that nobody can score. Harrelson had to hang on at third, and Johnson had to hold on at first base. Well, that's the first out of the inning. The Bills had four consecutive hits prior to that shot by Johnstone. Out number one. Now another conference at the mound for Atlanta, but they're not going to make any changes here because they don't have anybody up in the bullpen. Bobby Cox is out to talk to Rick Camp as Mike McBride is due at the plate for the Phillies. It's a tie ball game, 5-5 in the top half of the ninth inning. And for two clubs who claim they can't score any runs or at least haven't been lately, this has been a pretty exciting ball game. You really have to give the Phillies a lot of credit the way they're coming back in this game, too, after the horrible call by the umpire took them out of one inning and then they gave up more runs the last inning. They've come back and really gutted it out here in the ninth. And really would be nice to win this game. Potential go-ahead run at third base for Bake McBride. Both runs in the inning charged to Adrian Devine. Oh, there's a balk. A balk! A balk has been called, and the Phils will get a go-ahead run. Here is what uh, Rick Camp did. He blocked the throw toward first base after wheeling around but did not throw. Well, they got all messed up for some way. The reason the Braves, Murphy wasn't covering, and he looked over there to throw, and he wasn't there, and then he, oh, he just committed an obvious balk. Well, that run is charged to Camp, and it's the go-ahead run for the Phillies, and now Jim Morrison is coming out, and he'll go to second base as a pinch runner for Davey Johnson. Morrison out to second base to run for Dave Johnson. Bake McBride at the plate, no count on Bake. Phillies lead the ball game six to five. The run scoring against Camp on the ball. So a minute ago, the Braves led by two. All they needed was three outs. They only have one of them and they're trailing. Here's a swing and a ball on the left side. It's backhanded by Cheney. He will have no play. That'll be a base hit for McBride. An infield hit by McBride as the ball got by Gilbert. It went to Cheney, but he had no play. And Bake McBride has his third hit of the ball game. Morrison had to hold at second base. That is the 12th hit for the Phillies. At the plate, Larry Boa. Here's the pitch to Larry. It's low inside a ball. Larry has a pair of hits tonight. Stretching the pitch to Boa. He drops a bunt. It's fielded by Camp. Throws on over to first in time for the out. The other runner's moving up the base. I'm sure Larry will get a sacrifice on that. Yes, he will. And the play goes one to three. Boa advancing Morrison to third and McBride to second. Scoreboard shows the Phillies with 12 hits and we announced that to you, but I'm sure the Phillies total is 11 hits in this ballgame. All right, here's Mike Schmidt at the plate. Mike is 0 for 3 with a walk. Runners at second and third. 
And they're going to go ahead and give Schmidt a base on balls and face Luzinski. This is percentage baseball. And it seems to make even more sense right now with the slump that Greg is mired in. So Schmidt will be walked to load the bases. There are two outs in the inning. And an 0 for 4, Greg Luzinski will be coming to the plate. Adrian Devine and Rick Camp have been the relievers that the Phillies have done their damage against here. Well, the Braves, again, we say they have 12 hits out there on the scoreboard for the Phillies, but uh, Chris and I have both checked our scorebooks, and we have them with 11, so in the event that you're scoring with us, if your total reads 11, you agree with us. Well, what a spot for Luzinski to break his slump. The base is loaded and two down. Big, strong, right-handed batter at the plate, and he'd love to come out of it. Here's the stretch by Camp and the pitch to the ball. A strike call. Rick Camp is pitching out of the stretch, despite the fact the bases are loaded and there are two outs. This is sort of a pitcher's choice here, and apparently Camp, who is a relief pitcher, feels more comfortable throwing this way. Phillies lead it 6-5. to five. Pitch on the way to the ball outside. Missed with a slider, one ball and one strike. Seesaw ball game. Both teams have had leads, and now the Phillies are up by one. Pitch to the ball. Fouled off, out of play. One and two, the count to Greg. Greg was given a plaque prior to the ball game by a group here in Atlanta who honored him for his youth work in Philadelphia. As you know, Greg is buying seats for underprivileged youngsters again in his bull ring. Here's the pitch to Greg, and again, he fouls another one off the right side. Count holds at a ball and two strikes. The Phillies have batted around here in the inning. Luzinski is the ninth batter to come to the plate. The inning started with four consecutive safeties. Stretching the pitch by Camp. Outside and low, a ball two and two. The Phillies have had five hits in the inning. Hey, I see they've corrected the scoreboard. 11 hits. Luzinski, hard hit ground ball to second base. Royster gets it, throws the first in time for the out, and the inning is over. But the Phillies have recovered here in the ninth inning to post three runs on the board on five hits, and the Phillies leave the bases loaded. At the end of eight and a half, the Phillies lead the Braves six to five. Have you heard what's happening at Geno's? Oh, man, what's happening? Right now, you can get a Geno's Giant and regular fries for just 99 cents. Oh, right on. <laughs> Ninety-nine paltry pennies for a delicious Geno's Giant. Fella, you you've got a pretty good voice. I've been practicing. Gene Garber will pitch the ninth inning for the Phillies, who now have a one-run lead in this ball game. We also have several other changes. Jerry Martin has moved into play in left field, so probably Gene Garber will be batting in the number four spot. Barry Foote has come in to do the catching. And Buddy Harrelson, who was already in the ballgame as a pinch runner, will stay in and play at second base. So we go to the ninth inning, and Gene Garber will try to pin it down for the Phillies. The Braves will bat Hasselstein, a pinch hitter for Camp, and Roland Office. Here's Asselstein, a left-handed batter who tonight is one for four. He did drive in a run on a ground ball out. Gene Garber, Phillies pitcher, with a two and one record, a 2.08 earned run average. Garber winds, and here's the pitch, and it's over for a strike call to Asselstein. The Braves still don't have anybody in the on-deck circle. Phillies lead it six to five, trying to break a four-game losing streak. This might just go ahead and turn it around. Three runs in the ninth inning. Hasselstein sends a fly ball deep into right field, but Bake McBride is there, and he takes it to the out. Hasselstein flies out, and that's the first out of the inning. Bob Beal is coming out as a pinch hitter for the Atlanta Braves. Beal is quite an unusual story. Now, wait a minute. They're going to use Camp here, and they've got Beal out for the next hitter, I guess. Number 11, Joe Nolan, will be the batter here. They had uh, Beal out there, but they have switched now, and they're going to Joe Nolan. 
Nolan is a left-handed batter. He is a catcher by trade. He's a 208 hitter. Left-handed batting, Joe Nolan. One out of the ninth inning. Garber winds, and here's the pitch. Swing and a miss on the changeup. Strike one. Phillies are batting Martin eighth and foot ninth in the lineup. Pitch misses. One ball and one strike. One ball and one strike on pinch hitter Joe Nolan. Swing and a miss at a fastball. One and two the count on Joe Nolan. Garber ready. Here's the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out on a changeup. Strikeout for Gene Garber in the second out of the inning. And now Roland Office will come to the plate. Office, who entered the game as a pinch runner and stayed in to play defensively, will be getting his first at bat. Roland is batting 236. Two homers and five runs batted in. He is a left-handed batter. What a comeback by the Phillies. Things were awfully bleak tonight. They trailed by two entering the ninth inning. They now lead by one. Office takes low ball one. The windup by McGraw. Here's a ball laced to right field. McBride getting over. He catches it. The ball game is over, and the Phillies have won it. The Phillies have ended their four-game losing streak, and they have kept their head above the 500 mark as they come back to win this game 6-5. to five. And our congratulations to the Phils, and uh, we also want to say a special congratulations to Tug McGraw, the winning pitcher. He will get a case of Tasty Cake and one for St. Edmund's Home for Crippled Children. We'll be back with a wrap-up in just a moment. Great in any year. MAB paints. When you paint, get the paint that lasts longer. MAB. It gives you more years per gallon. And grade in 78 is what people will be saying about the Phillies. MAB has Phillies grade in 78 bumper stickers. And you could win two tickets to a Phillies game if one of the MAB spotters sees the Phillies bumper sticker on your car. To get your free Phillies bumper sticker, visit the nearest MAB paint store, dealer, or Rich Lux home center in your neighborhood. Time was, station wagons only came in one size, big. And if you wanted good mileage, you were out of luck. Malari gives you your money's worth of room and mileage of 25 on the highway, 18 in the city. That's an EPA estimate for a wagon with 225, one-barrel engine, and manual transmission. Your mileage may differ. It also has the high resale value you're looking for. No wonder Malari's been the number one selling wagon in America over the past two years. It gives you your money's worth when you buy and when you sell. See it today at your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Well, this is a classic case of all is well that ends well because certainly a lot of things went wrong along the way, but the end result is fine as the Phillies pull it out and win it 6-5. to five. Rich Ashburn will go over all the gory details of this one on the wrap-up show, and as I say, there were some, including three Philly errors tonight, and four of the five Braves' runs were unearned, but uh, the Phillies win the ball game, and their record now is 20-19, and 19, and they will not lose any ground tonight. Chris? Well, that was really, uh, you know, for such a badly played game, that was really a lot of fun to watch. And give the Phillies a lot of credit for coming back in that game. They were a brutal call by an umpire, cost them an inning, and then they gave up runs again. They gave up a lot of runs tonight on bad plays and still managed to gut it out in the ninth inning and come back from two runs down and win a game. And, you know, you need a game like that to finally snap out of it and make stuff stock going your way again. So it was a lot of fun to watch, and the Phillies finally win a game, but nobody said it would be easy. And it was not. Here are the totals for the Phillies. Six runs, 11 hits, three errors, seven left on base. Atlanta, five runs, six hits, no errors, eight men left on base. The winning pitcher in the ball game is Tug McGraw. He's three and three. Gene Garber gets a save. Gene's first of the year. The losing pitcher is Rip Camp. And Rick is 0-2. The game was played in two hours and 41 minutes. A paid crowd of 15,081 watching here in Atlanta. The teams have split the first two games in this series. In the rubber match tomorrow, Larry Christensen will face Preston Hanna, and we'll be on the air at 2.15 for that one. Nick Gear has been our engineer for tonight's game, our executive producer, Steve Silverman. Phillies baseball, a presentation of the Philadelphia Phillies. For Harry Callis, Rich Ashburn, and Chris Wheeler, Andy Musser saying so long from Atlanta, where the final score was Phillies 6, Braves 5. This is the Phillies Baseball Network. Baseball has been sponsored in part by your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. 
where you get grand slam deals on the most complete lineup of new cars in your area. And by Tasty Cake, whose cakes, pies, and cookies give you over 30 delicious ways to take a tasty break. Tasty Cake, all the good things wrapped up in one. MAB Paints for the best in paint and painting advice. Think of MAB and the more than 300 MAB paint stores, dealers, and Rich Lux Home Centers. And by Acme Super Saver Markets, home of famous Lancaster brand meats and quality ideal brand products. Shop Acme Super Saver. By your Coca-Cola bottler who reminds you that Coke adds life to baseball and all your favorite sports. Enjoy it often. And by Gerard Bank, where George lets you be the banker night and day, every day. By Champion Spark Plugs, for surer starts and better mileage, treat your car to a fresh set of champions. No matter what you drive, you can't buy a better plug. This is News Radio in the Delaware Valley, KYW 1060 Philadelphia. I'm Fred Hunsberger. The top story of the hour is word that the one-day slot machine take at Resorts International yesterday was the largest ever by any one casino. In other news, the holiday weekend has been marred by tragedy in portions of Texas where there has been heavy flooding. Former President Richard Nixon is hosting a party tonight for 550 guests, most of them former Vietnam prisoners of war. We'll have details after the Tasty Cake wrap-up show. It's official. Abington Township has granted building permits numbers 6034 and 6035 to the Marty Sussman Organization, Jenkintown, Pennsylvania, to enlarge the size of its facilities. Well, construction has begun, so it's your opportunity to make a deal on a car or truck you'll be talking about for years. The Marty Sussman Organization must move its entire inventory of new Oldsmobiles, Hondas, Dodges, Mazdas, and trucks. Even custom vans must go to make room for the construction workers and equipment. Now, this is not just another sale. This is a real opportunity to save hundreds of dollars on over 350 cars and trucks and over 100 used cars. We're not kidding around. There are no gimmicks, no restrictions. All in-stock cars and trucks are eligible. Even special deals on hard-to-get Hondas and Mazdas. Inventory must be moved immediately to make room for new construction during this truly we-mean-business sale. That's Marty Sussman Olds Honda and Marty Sussman Dodge Mazda, Jenkintown, Pennsylvania. And now Tasty Cake is proud to present the Tasty Cake Wrap-Up Show with facts and figures of tonight's game and an exclusive interview with the star of the game. So grab a Tasty Cake. There are more than 30 delicious kinds to choose from. Relax in your easy chair and get into the 1978 baseball season with Tasty Cake in the Phillies. All the good things wrapped up in one. Tasty Cake is the world of fun. All the good things wrapped up in one. Hi, everybody. Back in Atlanta Stadium. This is Rich Ashburn, and what a ball game we had here tonight. The Phillies finally winning at 6-5 to five to break a four-game losing streak, and our guest on the Tasty Cake Wrap-Up Show is Gary Maddox. Gary with a big night, a home run, a double, a single, and uh, Gary uh, kind of lost in the shuffle of this uh, tough road trip is the fact that you have really been uh, hitting the ball very well. I think you went over the 300 mark tonight. Yeah, as of, uh, you know, the last few games, I think it started in uh, in Chicago. I had had, you know, wasn't much said. I, you know, I had had two uh, sprained shoulders, and I went to the doctor in, in Chicago, and he gave me the okay, and what I'd been doing all this time was, you know, it was really causing me a lot of pain, and I was trying to alter my swing so that, you know, I could swing and be comfortable. And what it came down to was if I was going to play, you know, while I was hurt, you know, I couldn't let it change the way I swing the bat. I either have to be able to go up there and swing it the way I can or either come out. So, well, how does it feel now? Uh, you know, they're still pretty sore, but, you know, I'm swing. I'm just going to swing the bat. You know, if I can't go up there and swing it the way I can, it's going to hurt, but, there, you know, there's no chance of any permanent damage. So I just go up there and, uh, and swing the bat the way I always have. It hurts a little bit, but, you know, I'm just going to try and play through it. Can, can you see, uh, like, day-to-day -day improvement on it? Uh, well, on my right one, which is the one I, you know, I crashed into the wall when we were playing Cincinnati. That one's getting uh, pretty good. But my left one, I did that on April 18th, and it's, uh, it's been giving me trouble ever since then. Okay, it's uh, kind of hard to locate, you know, the central point of the pain, but that one on my left shoulder is kind of staying with me, but the other one is improving quite a bit. Gary, this looked like a game that the Phillies were not going to win. They gave away three runs. Uh, they had a, a horrendous call in left field, and... Uh, 
Yeah, I tell you, I have to give you guys credit for grinding that one out. Yeah, we, you know, you know, we do. We can't come back. We have a real good ball club, and I think one of the, you know, the key things about our ball club is the confidence that we, you know, we have in ourselves. No one around the clubhouse is panicking because of our losing streak, uh, anything. We still feel that we. If we go out there and give 100%, that we can live with ourselves. And I also feel that if we give 100%, we're going to win. And that's what everybody's trying to do. They're trying to hang in there and play the best they can. And we hope that we'll come out of it pretty soon. But we're going to, you know, stay with it and play as hard as we can. We're talking to center fielder Gary Maddox. And let's check the scoring in this ball game. The Phillies started it out in the third inning. The starting pitchers in the ball game, Jim, Jim Lomborg and Dick Ruthven, uh, both pitched shutout ball the first two innings. In the Phillies' third inning with two men out, Bate McBride getting the second of his three hits tonight, doubled, and Larry Bola uh, singled to give the Phillies a 1-0 lead. In the bottom half of the third inning, the Braves scored an unearned run when uh, Davey Johnson made an error on Shaney's ground ball. Shaney was sacrificed to second, and then uh, finally scored on an infield out by uh, Brian Asseltain. That made it 1-1. And the Phillies uh, in the sixth inning... After a Mike Schmidt walk, Lazinski struck out. Hebner flied to center field, and with two men down, our guests on the Tasty Cake wrap-up show, Gary Maddox, the batter, and here's what happened. Here's a pitch to Gary Maddox, playing in a fly ball into deep center field. Assel Stein, away back, it is out of here! Home run to straightaway center field off the bat of Gary Maddox. Gary, that's a lot of power. That's over 400 feet to dead center field. Uh, looks like you got a breaking ball, and you got all of it. Yeah, this is uh, this is one of the ballparks where I, you know, I think I am able to hit it out the center field. The ball carries here, you know, pretty good. I did swing the swing the bat pretty good, but I think you know the ballpark may have had a lot to do with it. I don't know, but you know, it it came at a good time, and I was happy to hit it. I take them any way they come. And the Braves coming back in the bottom half of the sixth inning to score two runs. One of those unearned. When uh, there was an error in the inning, that made it 3-3. In the bottom half of the eighth inning, Jeff Burroughs uh, started off that inning with a walk. He was sacrificed to second base. Murphy grounded out to third. And then uh, Bonnell came to bat and hit a line drive to left field. And here's what happened on that ball. Right-hander stretches. Pitch on the way to Schmidt. A shot to left field coming hard. And the ball is caught in left field by Jeff Burroughs. And a throw now back into the infield. And what's the call here? There's no way. Well, we'll have to see a replay. And, and then I can't believe that, that he caught that ball. And then, well, we'll have to. Ozark's going to argue about it. And Bo is going to argue about it. And DeMars is going to argue about it. So, Well, that, that was the play, Gary, we were talking about earlier. The line drive to left field that Mike Schmidt hit with a runner on first. And... And, of course, there's no doubt. We saw it on the instant replay in television that uh, it was a trap play. And, you know, what can you do about it? What did you guys, what were you guys uh, trying to do about it? Well, we were trying to get the third base umpire to, you know, to get some help from the second base umpire, anybody that, you know, might have seen the play clearly. But what the umpire said was that he saw the play clearly. If there was any indecision in his mind, you know, he would have asked for help. But he said he saw the play clearly, and in his opinion, the guy caught the ball. And, you know, everybody... On the, and on the bench, sitting right here. I think everybody in the ballpark knew he missed it, but the umpire. Well, that looked like a very uh, key play at the time, and uh, of course, uh, it, it was a big play for the Phillies, but they did come back to win. And the play we were talking about uh, earlier, after the Burroughs walk and a sacrifice, a ground out by the first baseman, Dale Murphy, and then uh, Barry Bunnell hit a line drive to Lazinski in left field, and this was a key play. Here's the pitch to Bunnell, laced to left field, Luzinski coming hard. He grabs the ball and hangs it. No, it gets beyond him. It goes beyond him, and scoring on the play is office all the way to second base. Bunnell and the Braves have taken the lead. That was a 4-3 lead, uh, and then the next uh, batter, Daryl Chaney, uh, and here's what happened to Chaney. Pitch to the plate, ripped into left field. Here's another one, but this one falls in front of Luzinski, being waved around as Barry Bunnell heading for the plate. He scores, and the Braves get another run. And a 5-3 Atlanta lead, and didn't look for the, good for the Phillies coming to bat in the ninth inning. Richie Hebner led off that ninth inning with a single, and our guest Gary Maddox looped a double to right field, runners at second and third, and uh, nobody out. Then Bob Boone bounced a single over the third base, um, and had to make it 5-4. Uh, and then Davey Johnson coming to bat, and uh, Bob
Bobby Cox, the Atlanta manager, decided to pull his infield in, and it cost him. Oh, off the glove of Cheney, it'll tie the ball game. Gary Maddox crosses the plate. Here goes Harrelson to third base. He is in there. And uh, had that infield been back, Gary, I believe that would have been a double play ball, but that's a gamble, and they, that's how you, you win and lose them, I guess. Yeah, there was uh, a lot of gambling, I thought. Uh, <laughs> I, th I thought he gambled when, he, you know, the score was tied, and he sent office in to, uh, to run for Burroughs. That's right, he took Burroughs and Matthews both out of that ball game late. Right, and I, you know, I thought that was gambling quite a bit, I, but, you know, it's funny how it worked out. They scored and went ahead, so it looked like a good move at the time, but then uh, in the later innings, they didn't have them to hit when it was their turn. But, uh... That's the game, I tell you. It's funny. I'm, I learned something. I'm surprised almost every time I go out there what goes on in the game. That's right. The Phillies really scuffling for runs, and uh, it's amazing how they won the ball game. Tied 5-5, and here's what happened to untie it. Oh, there's a balk. A balk. A balk has been called, and the Phillies will get a go-ahead run. Well, <laughs> you can tell. Uh, you can hear from Andy Musher. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I've seen a lot of balks, Gary. I don't think I've ever seen one like that. A, a double pump throw <laughs> from the pitcher's mound to first base. Yeah, he, the, the first baseman wasn't holding him on at the time. And I don't <laughs> think the pitcher even looked over there. He just, you know, took his quick move and got ready to throw and nobody was there. And rather than throw it away, he just kind of double pumped. And that's the balk, and we'll take it. <laughs> Gary, great ball game. Thanks for visiting with us. Thanks a lot, Richie. Gary Maddox, our guest, and for visiting with us, Gary will receive uh, a gift certificate from the Mitchell Daroff Clothing Showroom at 417 North 3rd Street in Philadelphia, the Rosemont Village Mall in Rosemont, and the Stock Room in Quakertown. We'll be back with the scoreboard right after this tasty break. Tasty cake is a day in spring, a brand new love or a golden ring. Tasty cake is the morning sun, it's all the good things wrapped up in one. Tasty cake is the deep blue sea, a song they're singing for you and me. Tasty cake is a world of fun, it's all the good things wrapped up in one. Why do the same kind of people who love those fantastic fillies also love Tasty Cake? Because both bring out the kid that's there in all of us. Like the delicious taste of Tasty Cake chocolate cupcakes. Tempting cream-filled chocolate, cream-filled buttercream cupcakes, and cream-filled coffee cake, too. With a tall, cold glass of milk, they're an irresistible treat for kids from 9 to 90. Tasty Cake and those fabulous fillies are all the good things wrapped up in one. Tasty Cake is a world of fun. It's all the good things wrapped up in one. Okay, let's check the scoreboard. The Dodgers beat the Giants 3 to 1 out on the West Coast. Montreal over Pittsburgh 15 to 1. Chicago and St. Louis are in the 11th inning now, still tied at 2-2. It's Houston 7, the Mets 3, they're in the 6th inning. Cincinnati and San Diego, nothing, nothing after 2. This afternoon, Toronto beat the Yankees 4-1. to one. Cleveland over Baltimore 6-2. to two. Boston shut out Detroit 1 to nothing behind Louis Tiant. Jim Rice won that ball game with his 17th home of the year. Kansas City and Minnesota postponed because of rain. Texas over Seattle 3-2, to two. they're in the 8th inning. And the rest of the American League action just a little bit later. So the Phillies have broken their four-game losing streak and will play the Braves in the finale here tomorrow afternoon. It's going to be Preston Hanna for Atlanta, Larry Christensen for the Phillies. Chris Wheeler, my producer, Nick Gear, my engineer, will talk to you tomorrow afternoon from Atlanta on the Phillies Baseball Network. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball.